for the Huskies now at the Welcome to week four of the 2017 Prairie Football Conference season and another chapter in the Battle of Edmonton. Good afternoon, football fans. I'm Kevin Donnan with ICU Video as we continue our broadcast coverage of PFC football. And today, the Edmonton Wildcats take on the Edmonton Huskies here at Clark Park. The Wildcats come into this game at 0-3, but they're a team that's playing hard-fought, respectable football. And as for the Huskies, they are the hottest team in the PFC right now at a perfect 3-0 following back-to-back -back blowout bin wins over the Calgary Colts. 50 years ago this weekend, this advertisement ran in the local paper talking about exciting junior football and a battle between the Wildcats and Huskies on Children's Day. Fast forward 50 years and it's minor football day here at Clark Park and the rivalry, this classic rivalry continues. Now let's send things upstairs to Dave Rozak and John Belmont for the call of today's action and two guys who may or may not remember what happened in 1967. Guys, take it away. I'd have to ask my dad about that. But, uh, <laughs> it, rivalries aside, uh, JB, it, it, it's going to be an interesting contest because the, the Wildcats, they're, they've got to overachieve. Well, they have to in this ball game, but at the same time, they have played two tough games. They, they played the Colts, lost 20 to 18, very good chance to win that ball game. And last week against the uh, Winnipeg Rifles, they were right down on their one yard line and fumbled late in the game that would have tied it for them. And so these are things that happen and, and they're just a young team that's learning how to win. And as Coach Park says, they need a win before they'll start winning. On the other hand, the Huskies have to make sure that they don't get overconfident going into this game. And that is one of the biggest threats that they have. They have a very good team. They have a veteran team, veteran quarterback. And the worst thing that can happen to them is they come out just thinking they can walk on that field and just win the game without playing at a very high level. Two things will happen. One, they could lose. Two, they'll get injuries. They may or may not be without the services of Jimmy Airy, their great running back and, and receiver. He has a case of the flu and is not really up to par. That could be a, a big problem for them offensively. It could be, of course. Uh, they've got Brant Berzik in there, who is a very, very good back. But the two of them together give you such a dual threat, and they have different styles of running. So uh, together they're a lot better than singly. And we've talked about their special teams, and Jimmy Airy is such a big part of the, the punt and kick return team. He is so. Now, they've got other guys that can go in there and can return pretty well, but not with the level of explosiveness that Jimmy Airy has. And Brandon Olson is out with a foot injury. We saw him get injured last week, and he is going to be really missed. He's one of their top receivers for the, for the Wildcats. He is. Uh, the quarterbacks have great confidence in, in Brandon. He's, he's a very good receiver. He knows how to get open in the zone. He can beat people in man. So uh, it, it's going to be very interesting to see if they can adapt without him. If there is one big advantage that either team has over the other, I look at the special teams of the Edmonton Huskies, and boy, I'll tell you what, when you and I did that game a couple of weeks ago, they were so dominant. They are. They're dominant in their coverage, and they're dominant in their returns. And uh, Coach Reed Knox does a very good job with these guys, and he's got them believing. So they're extremely aggressive in their cover units, extremely aggressive in their return units. Uh, some of the problems that or one of the problems that the Wildcats have had over the season is their running game. That may change tonight with the insertion of Matt Heinrichs, who is uh, going to be in at that uh, running back position in place of Kieran Bell, who started the game last week. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do against this very powerful uh, defensive line of the Edmonton Huskies and the Wildcats in their yellow and blue uniforms will be kicking off, defending the zone to our left against the all black Edmonton Huskies. And our football game is underway. The Battle of Edmonton, the ball down at the 15 yard line. It's taken there by number 22 of the Huskies. And that of course is Brant Burzak and Burzak will bring it back for a gain of about 20 yards or so. Now look to me like on that, the Brant Burzak got the ball and he got up the field looking for a seam and He's got very quick feet, but he was dancing a little there instead of exploding, and, and that cost him. And uh, the Wildcats were able to break in, make a tackle just over the 30-yard line. Run back 17 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Edmonton Huskies over the Edmonton Wildcats. And there is a handoff this side. Once again, it is Berzik, and Berzik 
will move it forward for a gain of close to eight yards on the play. He needed to get to about the 42, and he ran out of bounds just short of the 40. Now the individual that hit him there was uh, Dalkey, number 21, the short side halfback for him out of Duke High School. Very good, strong, tough defensive back. Fifth-year man Brad Lonhart, starting quarterback for the Huskies. There's a little play action pass out on this side. It is complete to number nine, Connor Bergeson, and Bergeson is run out of bounds just about the line of scrimmage. I don't think there'll be much of a gain on that one, and it will be a two and out for the Edmonton Huskies, and that alone, I think, has to be a big boost for the Edmonton Wildcats, J.B. Well, it is, and that's the way they want to start. They got to take these in this a game like this. They have to take it a play at a time. And that's what they did in that series, and their ex defense executed very well. Well, that's exactly what Coach Darcy Park was looking for. He knows that once they get that first win under their belts, it could be a big change for them, and they have to do it one play at a time, one series at a time. There's the punt. It comes down to about the 40-yard line, taken there by Isaiah Brown. And Brown, who is the leading punt returner in the uh, Prairie Junior Football Conference, brings it back just over five yards, so they'll lay it down at the 45, and it'll be first down for the Edmonton Wildcats. Now, the thing about Brown is he, he's he got great feet. He, he reads the field extremely well. He's a lot like Jimmy Arian returns. He, he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing out there. 15 punt returns on the season so far for 124 yards. The starting quarterback for the Edmonton Wildcats will be number nine, Justin Swedish. Swedish rolling to his right on play action. Has a man open at the 30, just over the outstretched arms of number 88, uh, Zach Burgess. And I'll tell you what, that was so close to, uh, to being broken. Well, it was, and the receiver was wide open. And it looked like a zone coverage. And, uh, and what happened is that he just come up the seam on it and uh, we didn't get communication from the safety over to the corner and uh, should have been a completion. Burgess should have been out, six points. Burgess out of Leduc Composite High School just missing that six pointer. Now out of the shotgun. There's the pass once again over the head of the receiver and that was intended for Jacob Mihalides out of Sherwood Park uh, Bev Basie High School and it will be a two and out for the Wildcats. But what I saw on that series was the, the confidence shown by uh, Justin Swedish on, on both those passes, the good, strong passing. They were good, strong passing, and uh, the big thing was they went two quick passes, and interestingly enough, both receivers were wide open. They were just overthrown. All right, the punt to be taken by Matt Zeroni. He's going to fake it, as he did last week. Now he'll get it away. Gets an end over end all the way down to the 10, the 5, and it'll be picked up there by Berzik at the five yard line. Great downfield tackling by the Wildcats. And they will pin the Huskies deep in their own zone at about the five yard line. And what we are seeing here, Dave, is what we talked about at the start of the show. It looks to me, and you see it on special teams, the Huskies are not getting into their blocks and driving up people off. They're hesitating, they're waiting. That shows me that they're a little overconfident. They think they can just come out and play. They'll have to get that straightened out real quick. All right, it'll be first down for the Huskies. The ball on their own five-yard line. Brad Lonhart, the quarterback. Single setback. There's the handoff up the middle. Taken there by number 22, Brant Burzak. And Burzak will bring it all the way up to about the 15-yard line. He should be just shy of the first down, depending on where they mark it. He should be about a half a yard short of the first down. Just an inside zone play and a very good run by by Brandt, uh, he, he popped the seam and he's got such quick feet, he gets vertical very fast. Lonhart now under center, Burzak the setback. Lonhart takes it himself and he has stopped as he goes around the outside. But he should have enough for the first down. So the there's, there's a case where uh, they just need the first down and they closed everything down inside. Brant went outside. All right, now out of the shotgun. Looking in, out of the pocket, there's the pass. It is complete over the middle for number nine. J Jordan, will, I'll make that Connor Burgesson, and Burgesson gets enough for the first down. Now there again, it shows uh, Brad's confidence and his, uh, his veteran playing style, he, he was able to see the field, the game slow for him, and he was able to make the play. 
The quick hitch to the outside, complete to number six, Tanner Buchanan. And the Paul Kane graduate moves it ahead for a gain of about three yards. So it, it appears evident that they're willing to go with that quick short game early in, the, early in this contest. It does, and they're gonna mix it up. Uh, the, the Wildcat secondary is fairly good, I think. There's that and hitch pass to the outside now, taken by Tony. That's Connor Nickel. Connor Nickel, rather. And uh, Nickel will make enough for the first down. Now Connor Nickel out of he's out of McNally. He's very good back. They love on that fly motion and just get him out, pop on the ball, then get it going. He's very just a quick. Second year man for the Huskies. Back in the pocket, looking to the inside once again. It is complete at about the 50-yard line, taken there by Harrison Cable. And the Leduc Comp grad moves it ahead for a gain of about five yards. Now what we have, we have man coverage by the looks of it there. And uh, Harrison beat his man, just come across five-yard grain on a crossing route. Showing blitz, but uh, Lonhart rolls out to the right side, and the pass is complete. Over there to number 34. That's Jacob Battenfelder, Batten. the fullback, and uh, he is he's out of Fort Saskatchewan. Yeah. His his last year's fifth year player, one of the best blockers on the team. He's learned to catch the ball pretty well out of the backfield, and Brad has all the confidence in the world in him, and he'll run over you. He's a big guy. He is strong. He's very strong. Back in the pocket, there's a flag on the play as Lonhart is Brad, forced out of the pocket. He's got a free play, so. He's going to throw it all the way down. It is complete touchdown. <laughs> Tanner now, Buchanan. Now this play should be offside on the left defensive end of the Wildcats. And if that's what it is, this is a touchdown. Now I, Brad saw that and I think he just, he knew he had a free play. So he's going to let that ball go even though there was good coverage. That's what it is. 41 yard pass completion for the touchdown. Offside on the Wildcats, number 47. That penalty's declined. Moving legal block on the Wildcats, number 92. That penalty's also declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. So a couple of penalties against the Wildcats, and that's something that Coach uh, uh, Darcy Park uh, was, has been really emphasizing all week in practice. Watch out for those penalties because they can hurt you, as they did last week and obviously tonight as, or today as well. And I don't know if this happened on that last play, but Brad, being a veteran quarterback mm -hmm. with a veteran offensive line, although he's got some replacements this week, they do a lot of hard counts. So he changes counts on them. He'll draw young guys offside. And uh, this is what I could have happened on that play. I'm not sure it did. But anyway, the Wildcat defensive end did jump, and it cost him six points. Kyle Miller is the... Uh, <coughs> Head referee for this afternoon's contest. The umpire is Matt Spetter, the field judge Andre Leduc, the back judge Jesse Webb, the side judge is Larry Leduc, the head linesman is Brandon Iwanishan, and the line judge is Mark Buczynski. Don't think the officials get enough good recognition, name recognition in these games. <laughs> they, they do get lots of recognition, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, that's good. right. It's not necessarily <laughs> good. And, uh, you know, that's the big I thing about that. it. It's like being a wide receiver. Uh, when you make a mistake as an official, everybody sees it. Yeah. And it's, if a wide receiver makes it, everybody sees it. A corner makes it, everybody sees it. All right, the Huskies on the kickoff. The ball comes down to the 15-yard line. It's taken there by Lucas Howe. Howe tries the outside and is hammered to the ground at about the 20-yard line in there to, to make the tackle. And as you said, the big guy, number 34, in there again for the uh, for the Huskies, Jacob Battenfelder. Uh, Jacob, when he, five years ago, when he came in with the Huskies, he was one of the best special teams covered people. Mm -hmm. And he'd get down the field quick. He has a nose for the ball. But if you looked at that, the key of that play was the contain man. He stayed outside, forced it to come back in, and Jacob was able to fill in along with a couple of other Huskies. Justin Swedish at quarterback for the Edmonton Wildcats. There's the play action to Bray Josun and the pass, it is incomplete and really nobody around the ball. I think it was probably intended for number 88, uh, Zach Burgess, but it was well short of him. In fact, there was a couple of Huskies just standing around. Well, in that play, what happened is Darian Nitty read the bootleg quickly. 
Yeah, he is the outside linebacker on that. And number 36, and he came hard as soon as he saw it. The quarterback let the ball go, I believe, a split second before he wanted to. And as he released, he was hit. So that ball, it just kind of took off. And they're fortunate it wasn't picked. But it was a very good play by Darian Nettie. We have an injured Wildcat, one of the uh, big O linemen. Let's see if we can get a number on that. Just watch this play once again, and uh, you're right. He did get hit just as he let the ball go. And, and that hurts. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Those, all those quarterbacks, they wear flak jackets. And that's why they invented and them right there. that's why they wear them. They're right there. As Nitty is a hard hitter. That whole linebacking core of the Edmonton Huskies is, uh, they're all devastating tacklers. Uh, Vince Stiffner number 33 out of Millwoods Christian, Jason Brown, number 41, the middle linebacker out of Parkland, Brett Vanderkorp at number 27, who is out of Harry Ainley, and uh, Darian Nitty who is out of Kelowna. Uh, every one of these guys can deliver the lumber, and they will deliver. Don't forget Tylen Smith, too, the uh, young rookie out of Olds. He's playing on that uh, left outside uh, linebacker position, and uh, He's really been a, a great find for the. Well, the, that's the actually Quade Smith out of the Otto Olds, but he is out of, uh, the, he's defensive halfback. And uh, that's number 40. And he is, he hits just like a linebacker, as does his opposite side, Brandon Mellon. Motion we'll goes talk to about this them side. a little later. And sucked by number one, Donovan Bergmeier, the Salisbury comp graduate. Breaks through that uh, offensive line, and Swedish is thrown for a loss of about maybe five yards on the play. So it'll be now we've down. talked about this before, Dave. Uh, those defensive ends for the Huskies, all of them, they're tall, they're lean, and they can move. And that's what happened there. He just got off the ball real quick. The tackle couldn't keep up with him, and he was able to get in and make the sack. Bergmeier, 6'6", 260 pounds. He's a fourth-year man for the uh, for the Huskies. Good punt away, high spiraling kick down to about center field. It, it ball comes loose off the hands of the uh, receiver, and the Wildcats say they have recovered. Now what we have in this, uh, Nathan Felito, number three, misread the ball. He was a little behind it when he came up to make the play. He didn't get under it enough, and it dropped, kicked back, and there happened to be a Wildcat coming down. It was probably their contain man in perfect spot made the play. Number 24, Chase LaRose in there to uh, recover that fumble. A rookie from Belrose High School in St. Albert. Swedish at quarterback, decides to take off by himself, gets around one man and then is hammered at uh, just over the center field stripe for a gain of close to maybe three yards on the play. And again, uh, not much time for Swedish. He had to make up his mind quick before he, uh, before he threw that ball away and decided to take it off himself. Well, a man we've talked about quite a bit, the nose guard for the Edmonton Huskies, Bryce Lee out of Ardrossan. He, he can beat two people, and he puts pressure on them. When two go, the other gap can open up, and that's what happened there. This time some time, and a catch, and a completion at the 30-yard line to number 88, Zach Burgess. And this time it was the same, uh, same route that he uh, tried earlier in this quarter, and this time it was right into his arms. That was a perfectly thrown ball because there was a narrow window there. The two, the corner and the deep and the safety of the Huskies were right there. And the receiver made a heck of a job at catching the ball. Total concentration. Gain of 24 on the play. It'll be first down for the Wildcats as their offense now on the move with 6.39 to go and trailing by a score of seven to nothing. The referees call down the play. Not sure if uh, they were talking with Coach Darcy Park over on the far side, but I think we're ready to go now. Bray Josu is the lone setback. Please reset Four the, flankers. Uh, the, game, the time clock to five seconds. The play clock to five seconds. They had a problem with the 20-second clock, so they're, they're just resetting it. He's got to get off. They've got five seconds left to go on it. 
I think they have to run it down. I don't think that sets just a five. They have to take it to 20 and bring it down. As you can probably tell by listening to the uh, referee uh, referee's microphone, there's quite a bit of wind out there right now, and it seems to be coming out of the northwest. That prevails in this stadium, Dave, a lot. You either get it, usually it's a northwest wind, but if you ever get a southeast wind, that's usually real bad weather. And worse, we're worse sitting, we get it in our face. We'd rather have that northwest wind. You got that right. Us. You got that right, partner. Here we go. All right, once again, Swedish. In the uh, I formation, the handoff to Bray Josu. Josu gets away from one, but then is finally tackled. In there to uh, make that tackle was number 41, Jason Brown of the Huskies. And the first man in was uh, the J linebacker, Brandon Va Vanderkarpet, um, and he did a good job getting him and wrapping him and then Joseph's got real good legs and he just keeps powering and he broke out of the tackle but it was enough that Jason Brown could come and fill him off. Three flankers to this side, two on the other. Looking downfield and into the middle. Well, it looked like the ball and the defender arrived at exactly the same time and as a result, uh, Jacob Mihalidis couldn't hang on. Well, now here's a, an interesting situation. That ball, Looked like a, a quick slant or a short post. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Gatano Minto, the, the corner, was in man coverage or where there was on. I'm pretty sure it was in man. He came down and met him just as the ball got there. Now, if you look at the defensive backs of the Huskies, from O'Shane Samuels, the strong corner, through Minto, the weak corner, all of them are hard hitters. Matt Zeroni with the uh, field goal attempt, and it goes off the goal post. And no good. Great, great opportunity there for the Edmonton Wildcats. But uh, James Barnsley uh, was unable to uh, get it through the goalposts. Now, I believe it was Catano Minow coming from the left side. And he was in position where he might have been able to block that ball if he had been a little closer to the line of scrimmage. He was in a little tight, so he didn't go at the man because he knew he would have hit him, mm -hmm. and then it would have been first down for them. So this is a, a big thing for the Huskies, and I'm sure Barnsley's uh, whole co concentration was taken off by Minto. So the Huskies leading this one by a score of 7 to nothing. get the ball on their own 20-yard line. There's the handoff along the right side to Grant Berzik, and Berzik plows ahead for a gain of close to... We'll call it eight yards on the play. If you look at the replay on this, this is a little counter trap and uh, very well executed by the Huskies. And uh, Berzik gets turned up very quickly and gets very close to a first down, about a nine-yard gain. Big hole along that offensive line for him to move through. The, and a lot of that is set up, Dave, by the amount of zone that they run. And that looked like a zone, then all of a sudden it came back. Looked like early movement on the on this side by the Huskies, but uh, no flags come down. And uh, Lonhart takes the ball himself ahead for a gain of about three, and it'll be enough for the first down. Now that is twice that uh, Brad Lonhart in second and short or third and short has gone around the end. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any compensation by the Wildcats in those situations. Play action, out of the pocket, pass complete at the 35 yard line. Taken over there by number five, uh, Harrison Cable once again. And uh, Cable coming into this game, that's his 18th pass reception. And he's had over 220 yards in receiving with one touchdown heading into this contest. Two, uh, two receptions so far this afternoon. What a find he was last year. He, you know, he has really done well. The Huskies are very happy with him. Another one of these good Leduc players and uh, just executed very well. Here's screen, screen pass to Burzak. Burzak at the 50. Gets around a couple of tacklers and then is swarmed at the midfield strike. And in there to help on the tackle was uh, number 92, Cole Milford out of Holy Rosary in Lloyd Minster. And we say hi to everybody out in Lloyd watching this game on the World Wide Web. Now what's interesting to me with that was the, the how the screen was set up. The line did an absolutely outstanding job and we'll mention their names in a minute. Out of the shotgun, the pass is complete. Just over the 50 yard line to number six, Tanner Buchanan. 
Again, tremendous concentration on the part of Tanner Buchanan. He lost that ball for a second, and he pulled it back in just as a defender was coming over him. Huskies no doubt have a, a, a potent uh, passing attack with the, the likes of Harrison Cable and Tanner Buchanan and uh, Connor Mickle, all great receivers. And here's the uh, screen pass. Once again, actually a little flip forward to Burzak. Burzak gets around a mess of tacklers and is finally taken down at the 15-yard line. Grant Burzak with an incredible piece of running. Now what they did there, they set up, what we call it a tripod or a bunch alignment to the weak side, to this side flooded those guys out of there and then brought Burzak around around a little shovel screen and very good execution. Again, play action, again into the middle, complete to number five, Harrison Cable, and Cable is stopped. Finally, they blow it down. He'll be shy of the five yard line, but uh, may have enough for the first down. We'll see where they mark it. By the looks of it, it is a first down. Uh, could be close, but I think it is. We'll see. In comes uh, Jake Battenfelder, so they're putting an extra back in the backfield. They'll measure this. Connor Mickle comes out of the game. Battenfelder comes in. Th this, uh, this is, I guess, what they call in the CFL almost a tempo, a tempo offense for the for the uh, Huskies. They're they're moving the ball quickly, getting getting the play underway quickly. Yeah. We got a first down here, and that's exactly right. Rick Walters loves to run high tempo offense. They'll mix it up as a, as the season goes on. How much they'll use it in a game, but they they execute it very well. And they practice this every day, high tempo, and in, in their right built into their practice. Huskies lead by a score of seven to nothing. Two oh three to go in this first quarter, and they are on the doorstep once again at the seven yard line. Out of the shotgun. Rolling out, now passing into the end zone. And it is incomplete. No flags on the play. They were trying to run a wheel, wheel route uh, with Battenfelder, and they had a post there, but uh, Lonhart got pretty good pressure on him in there, and I think he let the ball go a little earlier than he wanted to. P pretty good coverage, too, I believe, by uh, uh, Isaiah Brown out there. Isaiah Brown is a pretty good cover corner, and uh, I don't think... Uh, as much as I like Jacob Battenfelder, I don't think he matches up well with him. All right, back in the pocket again and into the end zone. It is knocked down. Big defensive play by Tony Savchuk playing on it at that safety position, came across and knocked the ball down at the last minute. Now, Tony Savchuk is safety, of course, with the Wildcats. They might have been in straight man coverage there, bring him over and go cover zero, which I would be, wouldn't be surprised in this situation. Brad Lonhart. That was on him. He let the ball go way too late, and uh, his receiver was wide open early. If he lets it go early, he's got a touchdown. So that forces them into a, a field goal kicking situation. Cole Sabarin out there, and he puts it through the uprights, and it is a 10 to nothing football game in favor of the Edmonton Huskies over the Edmonton Wildcats with a minute nine to go in this first quarter. And a pretty good first quarter of football it's been. It has been, and, and the Wildcats are playing hard. Now they're making some mistakes, and the mistakes they're making, a lot of them are that type of mistake you get from young teams. They're not meshing together in every aspect of their game. But you're seeing big things from them. Their, their secondary is doing some pretty good coverage. Their pressure is, is starting to get to Brad a little bit. And these that if they can build on that, they'll be very, very competitive. Justin Swedish at quarterback, motion goes left. There's the handoff to Josu, and Josu was just one step away from breaking that one before he was stopped along the offensive line. And I think in there uh, to uh, make that stop was it was Donovan Bergmeier. No, the, the guy that make, made the stop was 41, was uh, Jason Brown. They just looped him. They, they slanted Bergmeier inside and brought Brown outside. And it wouldn't have mattered where that back went. He was going to get hit. <laughs> It was a good defensive stunt. Very well executed. Out of the eye, motion goes to the right. There's the play action, and Swedish had no chance on that one. Bergmeier just shot the, uh, the, the hole, and uh, he was on top of uh, Swedish before he could even set the, uh, set the pass. Now there again, we'll have to look at the replay, but it looks to me like he came inside on that, that he just slanted through the inside, and, and they didn't pick him up, and he was free. 
Bergmeyer's very, very quick, as is our other defensive end on, on that side or on the other side. And, uh, of course, uh, Skylar Schellenberg. These guys, they can move. Matt Zeroni to do the punting for the Wildcats as the clock runs down to end the uh, first quarter. And Zeroni was able to get that one away just barely. He was surrounded by a couple of Huskies, but he got it away. A good kick goes out of bounds at around the 45-yard uh, line. So it'll be first down for the Huskies when we start the second quarter. One thing that I noticed uh, on that punt, uh, young Mr. Uh, Felito was playing much deeper than he was on the previous one. And uh, when the ball got up in the air, he just let it, it was going toward the sideline, he wasn't gonna try to make a play on it. I thought the Huskies did an excellent job on doing the, uh, on getting in and not contacting the kicker. They were too tight to him. They had a pretty free rush on him, but they didn't touch him at all. Oh. All right, we want to thank uh, Hertz Equipment Rental, the Edmonton Eskimos, the uh, Glenn Sather Sports Medicine Clinic, FC Edmonton, and the Eskimo Excavators for all their help and sponsorship of this Edmonton Huskies football team. Speaking of the Huskies, let's go down and talk to Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. Huskies fans, don't forget about the big event coming up next week as the organization will formally induct the inaugural, or no, inaugural members of the Edmonton Huskies Hall of Fame. The Huskies Gala Banquet is coming up on Tuesday, September 12th at the Santa Maria Garetti Center at 7 o'clock. Of course, the inaugural members were announced earlier this week in ICU video. Would like to congratulate the, the inductees and, of course, the families of some of those inductees, uh, and they include Vic Kamelik, player from 1958 to 62 and coach from 68 to 76. Of course, the legendary Ron Forwick, a player from 62 to 64 and a legendary former Eskimo. Charles Chuck Henderson, a builder from 1954 to 59. J.R. LaRose, of course, very familiar with him. A lot of Edmonton football fans, a Canadian Bowl and Grey Cup champion, former Husky, of course. Tinson, current Eskimos coach, was named to the Huskies Wall of Fame, or Hall of Fame. John Pyra, a player from 1966 to 69, and a builder from 1986 to 2004. And finally, Dr. Murray Smith, a builder from 1954 to 58. And of course, the 1962 National Championship team. And guys, especially for Coach Belmont, uh, what a great group to start things off. Well, it really is that all of those gentlemen are very well to the honor and uh, you know, you go back to Chuck Henderson, what he did in his time all the way through when you look at J.R. LaRose and Tim Prince, a great group of guys. Huskies have the ball on their own 42 yard line. Play action again into the middle, complete at the 50 yard line and taking it there was uh, number nine, Connor Bergeson and Bergeson becoming a, a popular target of uh, Brad Lonhart here early in this contest. They like the inside receivers, Bergeson, both Bergeson and Cable, they, they both do a very good job. Uh, one aspect about that I'm noticing, Brad is really having to be sharp in his passes. The coverage is very good here from the Wildcats. As they hand off to Burzak and Burzak moves it ahead a couple of yards, he should have the first down. They'll mark it uh, just shy of the center field stripe at around the 48 and a half yard line. I'm not sure, yeah, they say he's got it, so yeah. that's good, it was close. Mm -hmm. That was a good fill. <coughs> Wildcats trailing this one by a score of 10 to nothing. The Battle of Edmonton, part one. Part two takes place in a couple of weeks right here at uh, Clark Park. Motion goes to the right, back in the pocket. Again, that little swing pass to Grant Burzak, and Burzak has run out of bounds at around the 45-yard uh, line. And again, we see B Grant Burzak knowing where he's on, where he is on the field at all times, just steps out about a yard over the where he needed to be. He's hit. Now he's played a lot, but he's still a young football player in this league, and he has a lot of savvy out there. Does a very good job. Everybody downfield, swing pass again. The outside taken there by number 86 uh, for the Huskies, uh, Zach Desiatnik out of uh, Holy Rosary in uh, Lloyd Minster. This team has really brought a lot of players up from Lloyd Minster. Well, they've got such a good program going there, especially at Holy Rosary, and, and it, it's a tremendous credit to that league, that Wheatland League. A lot of good players out there. All right, we have a late flag. 
thrown by the head referee. I wonder if we had too many people in the huddle. It's Kyle Miller. Penalty, I think that's what it will be. On the open. 10 yard penalty remains second down. You called that one, right? It's what you have to be wary of. We've talked about this before, Dave. The way the rules are today, you can only have 12 in the huddle. Motion goes left. Back in the pocket, being pressured. There's a little flick pass to Grant Berzik, and Berzik plows his way up to the 40-yard line. He'll be shy of the uh, first down. They'll mark it at about the uh, 38 or so, and it'll be second and about uh, three, or third and about three. This is the first mistake I've seen Berzik make today. He got in too close to the pile to make his move, uh -huh. and by the time his move was made, he was into the pile. He makes that a yard or so back, and he had a seam either side to go to. Now they're going for it here with third and two. This is interesting. Third and two out of the shotgun. Berzik is the lone setback. And uh, Lonhart throwing an audible out there and now passes it on this side. Complete to number 86. They did not get the first down. Zach Desiatnik and a great job. I'm not sure who came up from that uh, cornerback position, but uh, I'll tell you what, great job of filling and a great job of stopping that play. That was an excellent job by the defense, and uh, this is one thing that I know coaches have different philosophies on, on how you run a third down play with a couple of yards to go, but it's always been my opinion that you want to go vertical with your, with your third down plays because people tend to bunch up on anything that's lateral, and they close on it quick, and that's what happened there. So the turnover on downs, the pass is complete to the 45-yard line taken there by Miolides, and he is knocked out of bounds after a gain of uh, about uh, five yards, maybe six. We see where they mark it down, right at the 45-yard line, so it is a gain of six, second and four. It's interesting in that position whether they would have gone for a field goal, or, but uh, Coach Walters, he loves to go for things, and they do that a lot. That was a well-executed play by the Wildcats. There's the pass. It is way, way over the head of the intended receiver. And again, I think probably a matter of Swedish getting rid of the ball before he wanted to. It was intended for number 80, um, uh, Brandon Rednord. Now, he got, he got some pressure on him and, and probably did let it go earlier. But that there was no chemistry between he and his receiver on that. He just let it go. Mm -hmm. And this is the type of thing that is the difference. You've got a young quarterback as compared to Brad Lonhart, who's a veteran. Brad holds on to that ball. He'll take that extra step back to let that play develop and then let it go. Matt Zeroni doing the punting. From the 35-yard line, high spiraling kick all the way down to about the 20, and it's taken there by Connor Mickle. Mickle gets around a couple of tacklers, now heads to the outside, avoids the out-of-bounds line and tries to get to the middle, but... Uh, is taken down there after a run back of about 10 yards or so. Good job of downfield tackling by Jack Jones out of uh, McNally High School. That was an excellent punt and uh, good hanging time and so on. Nickel made a real nice catch on it. But then if you notice, he came back this way and when he was running, he was hanging the ball loose and he also kept it on his inside arm. He's fortunate that that ball was not stripped on him. Holy. And I will guarantee you that uh, Ten yard penalty. The coaches, the Husky coaches, will be talking to him about that when they see the film. Matt Zeroni is uh, ranked fourth in punting in the PJFC, but I'll tell you, in the PFC rather. But I'll tell you what, after the last couple of punts that he has uh, fired out there, his average is going to be going up quite a bit if he keeps that up. There's the handoff to Burzak. Burzak is stopped at the line of scrimmage and then plows ahead for a gain of about a yard or so. Wildcats reading that one well. They are, and if you know the Wildcats are using that 30 front now, using with four linebackers like the Huskies are using, yep. and they are really attacking with it. Uh, Darcy Park, is, I was talking with him before the game, and he was talking how much fun he was having with his young coordinators. And of course, his defensive coordinator, Donnie Aubenauer, who uh, obviously has got these guys cranked up. Their coverage is good. They're uh, attacking on the run. And when the Huskies are getting the ball, they're paying a price every time they're moving the ball. So 
even with all the experience the Huskies have, the Wildcats are bringing it to them. And that's why the score is what it is. In, uh, instead of being way ahead, the Huskies are in a battle and they know it. Jack Jones is the intended or the uh, injured uh, Wildcat down on the field. And uh, speaking of paying the price, he made the tackle and he's paying the price for it. Yeah, you, you don't like to see these kids getting hurt out here. It's, uh, it's a tough game as it is. And, you know, you, you get so many different types of injuries you can get. We'll see what this is. Well, he's, he's feeling his head. I'm not sure whether he uh, may have suffered. Well, we'll see what happens. But he, he looks like he's up and uh, he's going to be okay. He's going to the dressing room. I suspect there, it's a concussion type thing. And uh, they're taking him right into the dressing room. Yeah. They do have a, a very strict concussion protocol in this league. That comes from Football Canada, and uh, it's a good protocol, and the teams all follow it. And uh, usually the kids are fine, but it's better to be safe. All right, change at quarterback for the Huskies. Out there is number four is Tommy Yanchuk, and Yanchuk with the great arm. Incomplete, well-thrown pass right into the arms of uh, 87, Christopher Edmund of uh, Queen Elizabeth, but he was well covered as well. Well, and add to that, uh, the uh, Wildcats changed their front. They went to a 40 front there, okay. probably because they lost Jones as a linebacker, so they put another defensive lineman in. They got some fair pressure, but it was a good, very good ball by uh, Yanchuk, and uh, Edmund just flat out dropped it. That ball was there. Okay, we'll be going down to Kevin in just a second here, right after this uh, punt from the Huskies. Cole Sabarin. Gets a good spiraling kick away. Down to about the 48 yard line, taken to the outside there by Isaiah Brown. Brown has the speed, he gets to the outside, to the 45, to the 35, and is run out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. I'll tell you what, you don't give Isaiah Brown that kind of, that kind of uh, space. No, the, the, the uh, Husky contained man totally lost contain. Instead of turning him back in, he allowed him to get outside. That's the worst thing that you can do. Cole Saber and the punter had to make the tackle. Let's go downstairs. Uh, here's Kevin. There we go. Thanks, Dave. And as you mentioned, uh, the trainers wasted no time in getting Jack Jones off the field as we check out that latest play. But they're both of these medical staffs, outstanding volunteers and, and workers that uh, make up both organizations. <laughs> And certainly Jack Jones is in the best of hands. Also want to pay tribute to minor football here in Edmonton. We've, I'm sure we've seen some crowd shots, but the attendance today is outstanding. So a big thank you to everyone supporting both clubs here today, guys. Thanks very much, Kevin. Second down for the Wildcats. There's a pass to the sidelines over the head of the intended receiver uh, on that far side. I believe it was number 85, uh, Mackenzie Lawson from uh, Wainwright. And that's been a, a, a recurring theme with, uh, with Justin Swedish in this game. He's been throwing over the heads of his intended receivers quite a bit. And sometimes with this, what these young quarterbacks will do, Dave, is they'll overstride. They, mm -hmm. they get into it. They're, they're, they want to get that ball in there. And when you overstride, it changes the trajectory of your release, and uh, the ball will be overthrown. In that case, he was wide open because Catano Minow was fairly deep on that. That would have been a first down. All right, the field goal attempt. For the Wildcats, James Barnsley from about short. the 36-yard line. It's going to be well short. It bounces at around the one. It's taken there by Burzak. Burzak has some room to the outside and some blocking, but a great job coming up from behind. Number nine, Justin, uh, Justin Swedish, believe it or not. Now, Justin Swedish was pinning. And he saw that, and he took the right angle and got after him. Now, Swedish showed some speed there because Burzak could move, <laughs> but he did have the right angle, and uh, Swedish was not picked up by a blocker. It would be, it would be great if uh, Swedish were able to display some of that speed on offense at quarterback. Well, he, just, I, he just can't get the space to do it. Well, and there's that. Plus, uh, they're not in a situation, it looks to me, like they're running plays that enable him to do it. That's true, too. They're trying to protect him in there the best they can, let him throw the ball. Another injured Wildcat over on the far side, uh, number 42, Rashid Robinson out of Holy Trinity. And uh, he goes off under his own steam. So it'll be first down for the Huskies. Ball on their own 11-yard line, 8.32 to go. 
in this second quarter. They lead by a score of 10 to nothing. There's the handoff, Berzik. Berzik is stopped at the line of scrimmage, gets away from that tackle, and is finally knocked down at about the 15 yard line, gain of about five. Now there's a case where Berzik made a real good cut inside zone. They overfloated a bit, he cut back on it. In there to help out on the tackle was Jamie Turcott out of uh, Cold Lake Composite. Again, part of that Wheatland That's right. uh, league. Lonhart, the quarterback, back in now after a short stint from Tommy Yanchuk. Play action, looking long along the sidelines. A man open, com- incomplete. Intended out there for number 87. Uh, it was uh, Christopher Edmund, but I'll tell you what, he had it all the way until he hit the ground. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Uh, he had one thing Chris has got to do, he's got to learn how to, to squeeze the ball, hang on to it. He's got excellent speed. He's mm-hmm. got good hand-eye coordination. He's just not finishing the play. That was a perfect ball by Lonhart. And the previous one by Yanchuk was very good. So once again, the Wildcats defense holds. And the punt will be coming deep from Husky territory. Kind of a bit of a shank, but it's a spiral, so it comes down to the midfield stripe. And over the 50-yard line to about the 48. And uh, a good job of uh, running that one back by big number 88, uh, Dylan Madal. Now, I am not positive who was contained on this side. It might have been Felito, but he did an excellent job. He did not allow the man to get outside. All right, let's go downstairs again. Here's Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. Good news from the Wildcats sideline. Number 26, Jack Jones, is making his way back to the Wildcats sideline with helmet in hand, so that's always a good sign. Guys? Under center, high formation, second man through is number 33 for the Wildcats, and we've been waiting to see him, Matt Heinrichs, and Heinrichs is stopped uh, after a gain of about a yard or so. And again, Darian Nitty came up from his outside linebacker position. Perfect form tackle, came right through him and made a, a good low tackle. It doesn't matter how strong you are as a back, when you're hit low like that, it is very, very hard to keep moving. All right, Coach Darcy Park continues to go with uh, Justin Swedish at quarterback. Swedish is being hurried, gets out of, uh, away from one tackle, gets away from another, and is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. There'll be little or no gain, and they once again, uh, all kinds of pressure on Justin Swedish. Now Skylar Schellenberg is hurt out there a little bit. He, he took the right angle, but he didn't get deep enough on his angle, and he had ended up trying to arm tackle. His foot got caught in the turf, and I believe he's either got a knee or an ankle injury. It's one of the two, and we call those turf injuries. It just grabs a foot, and you get it twisted a little bit, and something pops. That's something that's been an issue for a million years ever since the invention of turf. And I I think a lot of fans really don't understand exactly what happens, the mechanics of what happens when you dig your cleats into this kind. It's it's like it's like stepping on on wire almost. Yeah, it's it's like Velcro, you know, it just (laughs) grabs and uh, it doesn't let go. So something is going to give In this case. It almost looked like it might be an ankle more than than the knee and uh, he could get back in. But that that hurts. I'll tell you, it's it's pretty tough. But again, if his angle is a little different, he makes that play in the backfield. All right, kicking into this wind for the Wildcats is uh, Matt (coughs) Zeroni. Zeroni with a 31.7 yard average going into this game. Good snap, gets the kick away. Another high spiraling kick down to about the 10 yard line. It'll be taken there by Connor Mickle. Mickle tries the outside, finds a little bit of room and then is knocked out. Uh, just over the 20 yard line at about the 24 uh, run back or close to 10 yard. Or now we have yards. a flag here and I think it's offside on the Wildcats. If it is, the Huskies will have the choice to take it there on the 24 or to move them back five and have them repunt it. Now Zeroni has hit one that's about 45 and then put great hang time on it. So they might just take it here. 6.05 to go in this uh, second quarter. The Edmonton Huskies out to a 10 to nothing lead. Now, now if this is against the Huskies, ah. they'll repunt it, I would think. Yeah, 
Line of scrimmage was uh, about the 48 yard line, so that would move it ahead five yards. It's still not close enough for a field goal attempt, if that is the case. No, I don't think so. He is talking, the referee is talking to the Wildcats. Well, I notice the offensive line of the Huskies is going on the field. It's procedure. It's procedure by the sound. It looked like the, the fella who is out there is Dalkey. He's the captain, and uh, he gave the look like the. Uh, the signal with uh, Jacob Battenfelder, the Husky coach, is there, or the Husky uh, captain. And nice write up in the Sun today about uh, Jaden Dalkey. You know, he he Quite is the story of this young man. Well, it is, and the, these kids from Leduc, uh, they have a very good program out there, from their minor program right through their high school program. And uh, as far as I'm concerned. Every year you get two or three real good kids out of there. You look at Dalkey, you look at Harrison Cable. I mean, and, and Jesse Miller, who is a running back with the Wildcats. And uh, I coached his older brother years ago at, uh, at Leduc. And just they're real good kids out there. A lot of farm kids. Kids work hard. They love to play the game. Zach Burgess, <coughs> another one of them. Another one of the That's right. graduates. So now they... O-line is coming off for the Huskies. It's starting to look like a United <laughs> Nations no negotiation out here. I don't know. <laughs> they're, ball they're moving the ball back. There are three infractions on the play. The first one is offside on the Huskies. That is a five-yard penalty. There's also no yards on the kicking team. Number three. It's unnecessary roughness 15, on the kicking 20, team. Number three. 25. Those penalties will all be applied from the previous line of scrimmage. Where we kick. And now, the bottom line is 25 yards against the against the Edmonton Wildcats. It Ouch. is, and then that's when you get a UR, it's 15. Yeah. You add that on to the previous one, which is no yards, which is 15. That's 30 yards, and you minus the five, give it 25. That that's a big penalty. Darcy Park has lost a few more strands of hair. This is something he does not want his team to get into. There's the snap. It's a low one. And a good job of getting it away by Zeroni. It's a short one, comes down to the 50 yard good. line. It's bouncing. The Wildcats trying to get away from it, but they can't, obviously, because the ball bounces forward. And uh, it'll be a no yards call. And the ball will come down deep into, into Wildcats territory. This will, because it bounced, it'll be a no yards, a five yard, no yards penalty. So it should take it down to about the 46, 47 yard line, somewhere in there, I would think. Justin Hodinski in there to make that recovery on that short kick. Let's go it down again. Here's the, here's Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, down here on the Husky sideline, and there appears to be a fair amount of concern over the left knee of Skylar Schellenberg, number 91. Coach Belmont mentioned that just a few moments ago. Uh, but a lot of concern right now about the left knee. They're taking a long look at it, and uh, his return, I would say, is probably – Definitely questionable for this half and maybe for the game, guys. All right, we thought it might be his ankle, but uh, John, it uh, appears to be his his knee, and that's not a good uh, a good scenario. Well, if it is, the backup uh, for him today is Alex Veer, is a 6'5", 215-pound defensive end out of Jasper Place, uh, who I had the pleasure of coaching last year. He's going to be a very good defensive end, but this this is a tough game to come into to be a rookie. All right, another penalty on the Wildcats. First down, Huskies. Ball is on the 43-yard line in Wildcat territory. Brad Lonhart at quarterback. Back in the pocket, looking downfield. He's being hurried and throws the ball away. And uh, I think we're going to get a, a grounding call on this one. But uh, nevertheless, Lonhart... We we shouldn't get a grounding call because they're they're just saying that he was sacked, but Berzek was right there where the ball was. It was right just in front of his feet, so that shouldn't be. Wyatt shuts in on the near sack out of Salisbury Comp. And again, when you start looking at this, uh, you're looking at, at the Wildcats are making plays. And they're not consistent with them, but they're making them. You look at this time in the game, and uh, I, can tell, I can tell you right now, the Husky coaches will not be happy. They're having a few breakdowns. 
Now there's a case where a defensive end, when Schultz, he just, he beat his man. He got pressure on Lon Hart pretty quickly. Overconfidence? I don't necessarily think it's overconfidence. It just might be that, that the young man hasn't faced a defensive end that type, mm -hmm. and uh, he just got beat, and he's going to have to learn to deal with that, and, and down the road, I'm sure he will. And, of course, you're looking at a young guy there, second-year player, T.J. Sloboda, who's out of uh, Sylvan Lake, and he just flat-out got beat. And let's give full credit to that uh, Edmonton Wildcats defense, too. They have been outstanding. Yes, they've given up 10 points, but I think a lot of people at this ballpark figured they would be giving up a whole lot more than that, and they, they have hung tough. They have, and they're still in the ballgame, and that, that's the key for right now. The Huskies have got to pick it up. The Huskies have had lots of opportunity to score, and they haven't. Four flankers to the far side of the field. And looking that way is Lonhart. Lonhart into the middle. It is almost picked off. And <laughs> just over the outstretched arms of the, the safety back there. Uh, that was Tony Savchuk. And, and he wishes he had timed that jump just a little bit better. Tony could have timed it any time he wanted. He wouldn't have got up there. He's about <laughs> four foot nothing. He's about the same size as Hudinski. Now. Just interesting, Justin Hodinski and Tony Savchuk were the two best safeties they're graduating here out of Northern Alberta. And the Huskies and the Wildcats went after both of them. Each of them got one, and they're both playing very, very well. All right, the punt, end over end, down to about the 20-yard line. Taken there by number 22 for the Wildcats, Isaiah Brown. Brown gets away from a mess of tacklers. Does he have some room to move on the outside? He's got to get around number nine to do it can't and is finally taken down from behind at about the 32 yard line boy I'll tell you what I'm just waiting for Isaiah Brown to break one of those interesting enough in that uh, on this side Felito was number three was the contain man he almost lost contain on this side yep. that's how quick Brown is he reversed his field and if you look at it, it was number nine Bergenson was the, the contain man on the other side he did not lose it he kept going stretching it out and forced him to turn back in and then uh, Jason Brown finished it off. Swedish Good. quarterback. Looking downfield, pass complete. Nice job there by Jacob Mihalidis. That uh, pass was a little bit behind him, but he picks it up and picks up 15 yards at the, in the, at the same time. It looks to me like the, the Husky defensive backs are a shade slow on, on getting in there. Now, part of that is the Wildcats are running very precise routes, and Swedish is putting that ball where it has to be. Playing very well. Three receivers to this side of the field. And once again, Swedish is being hurried. And he's going to be taken down at about the 40-yard line. Uh, again, no time for Justin Swedish to get the ball away. And he was hit hard. He is down on the field. Now he gets up. You know he felt that one pretty hard. Yeah. That, that was a hard hit mm -hmm. from each defensive end. Now, uh, on the Husky defense... What they've done is they've taken Justin Pearson, put him over to the other side to replace Schellenberg instead of Alex Veer. So uh, we have another defensive end in there. He was normally a quick, what we call a quick end. He's gone to the other side. Actually, no, they put Bergmeier over to the wide side and put Pearson in on the other side. Second and long for oh, the they... Wildcats. And once again, Swedish is taken down for a huge loss of about 11 yards or so. And it's going to be third and a whole bunch. Now what happens here, Dave, and, and the Huskies have not done a nice job with this. You saw how the both ends come in clean. Well, in there, what they've done is moved Bergmeier over to what we call the rush end and uh, left uh, on, the, on the quick side, they have left uh, Pearson to play. They didn't want to put Rookie in in this situation, and he'll probably play later in the game. But uh, you can see the experience again of Bergmeier in that. He, he beat that tackle clean, had a good clean rush, as did Pearson. Zeroni to kick it away from about his own 20 yard line. 2.50 to go in this first half. Huskies lead it 10 to nothing. And it's a short shank into the stands. Now you can, uh, that shank That's came. A foul ball. The, that shank came. <laughs> from the pressure of number seven, O'Shane Samuel, who has, has done such a great job since he's come back. Mm -hmm. And he puts pressure on these punters like you can't believe. He might not block it, 
but that short punt was all his. Samuels tied uh, an all-time PFC record last week by blocking two of those punts. So once again, the Huskies have the ball deep in Wildcats territory. Burzak dances around a couple of tacklers and is finally taken down at about the 25-yard line. That'll be a gain of close to seven yards on the play. It'll be what we call it Coach, eight it, yards. It's eight yards, yeah. It, yeah. It's a good game now. The Wildcat defense played that pretty well, but the quick feet of Burzak, he was able to cut back and then pop up the seam on it. Uh, he is so quick, makes you miss. But they are missing that power of Jimmy Airy in there, mm -hmm. if you'll notice. Second and two. Ball on the 26-yard line. Plowing ahead is uh, Lonhart, and Lonhart should have enough. We'll see where they mark it. it. Could be tight. He had a full two yards to go for that. He did, but we have a penalty on the field, and I don't know who this is going to be on. If it's on the Cats, automatic first down. If not, if it's on the Huskies, it's uh, going to be second and about eight. Offside on the Wildcats, number 97. Five-yard penalty, result of play, first down. Offside on Wyatt Schutz. Now what's interesting in that play, if you notice the first two times that Brad Lonhart ran for short yardage, he went outside. This time, he just attacked into the tackle and uh, got good line search. Out of the eye, Grant Bursick in the backfield. There's a handoff to Bursick. He tries the left side, has some room over there, and is taken down from behind by number 21, Jaden Dalkey. And he will be shy of the first down. Picks up maybe four yards on the play. Second and six. That was a pretty good run. A very good angle by Dalkey and uh, made an excellent tackle. You saw his jersey jerk a little bit, and some people might have been crawling for a well, that should be horse collar, but he was down low, I believe, on the jersey, and perfectly good tackle. Once again, same play. Berzik, left side. Once again, Dalkey makes the tackle. Gain of about almost 10 yards, and they'll move it all the way down to about the uh, six-yard line, five-yard six line. It'll be first and goal for the Huskies with a minute 49 to go in the first half. Now here comes Jacob Backenfelder and Morgan Runge, and they'll be the tight ends in this. They're both fullbacks, and they will play a tight end type situation. Actually, they're putting Morgan out wide, so they're probably gonna run, bring him across. They're gonna lead with him. There's the hand there he goes right after. Berzik at the one. Stopped there, just shy of the touchdown. Now what you had there is an interesting play, interesting concept that they put into this red zone. Two tight ends in, mm -hmm. but Runge moves in and out like a receiver, and then he leads like a, an old fullback, just regular fullback on the lead play, but he is following Battenfelder, who is really a fullback who's playing the tight end. So they seal that corner and try to pop it in. We'll see what they do this time. Motion goes to the left. Everybody goes that way. Quarterback. Bad snap, and Lonhart picks it up and goes in for the touchdown, but we do have a flag on the play. That might be a roughing call, but we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. I, I don't know. This might be on the Huskies. It could be a hold. It, it is. is. A hold. Yeah. yeah. And uh, th these are mistakes that teams make. And in the red zone, you don't want mistakes down here. Speaking now they're going to be in a situation where they're going to be second and really long. Speaking of, uh, of mistakes, you know, the, the Wildcats have run into so many penalty problems. And again, this whole series was uh, predicated on, a, on three consecutive penalties on one play. And this is, this is what has given the Huskies uh, this field position and a, a chance to uh, up the score a little bit. You're exactly right. And, and here is the interesting thing now. The Huskies don't get this in the end zone. Hmm. If they get a field goal, Darcy Park is going to take his guys in at halftime and says, guys, we're, we're only two scores away. Mm -hmm. We're two touchdowns away. We played well. Now we got to pick it up. Husky coaches are going to go in, and there's going to be some uh, talking by the unit coaches about picking it up. And head coach uh, Ian McLean is going to be very, very emphatic about coming out and setting the tone and taking care of business. Mm -hmm. And that means no penalties. And <laughs> it's, it's going to be very interesting. This has turned out in this first half to be just an old-fashioned Husky Wildcat game. 
tough, physical football. May I quote John uh, Jim Donletty? Smash mouth football. <laughs> Jim remembers that. <laughs> oh, yes. Met, uh, or saw Jim for the first time in probably 30 years the other night at the dedication ceremony for uh, Coach Laz, Jim Lazaruk, uh, in the uh, Strathcona County uh, Wall of Recognition. What a great night that was. Motion goes left. Lonhart goes right and into the middle, and it is complete, and a touchdown to Grant Berzik. Now that was a form of a shovel wow. pass. They did a nice job flooding outside, getting everybody moving outside, bringing Burzak in. And instead of shoveling the ball, they passed the ball up into the seam. It was a very, very well executed play. A good red zone play because everybody's a man coverage down there. And so, when you get when you get motion going both ways like that, it, it just left middle wide open. It does. There's the point after, and with 58.7 seconds to go, it's a 17 to nothing football game in favor of the Edmonton Huskies. Now here's the difference going into the dressing room. Mm -hmm. If the Huskies stop these guys cold, stop the Wildcats cold, Huskies now go in, we scored right at the end, we know we can do it, we gotta pick it up, let's cut down on the errors and play Husky football. Wildcats go in, and Coach Park is gonna tell them the same thing. Mm -hmm. Outside of those three penalties, we held these guys and did a very, very good job. Then we got those three penalties, put them in scoring zone right away. So that's what he's going to tell. Uh, right now for the Huskies, they're in a better position because when you look at that score, 17 to nothing, when you score right at the end of the half like that to make it 17 nothing, it makes a tremendous difference. All right, you can bet that... Uh James Barnsley will be trying to keep the football away from, uh, well, I was going to say Isaiah Brown, but he's not out there. Well, the, the thing is, the James return. Barnsley's going to be sitting on the bench, and it's going to be Cole Sabrin oh, no, who's Sabrin. going to be doing the kick. And so. They're trying to confuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Good end-over-end end kick from Cole. Comes down to about the 10-yard line. It'll be taken there by uh, Lucas Howe. Howe tries the outside and is stopped quickly by number 30, Morgan Runge, uh, out of the White Court Cats. Morgan is a, is a solid, solid football player. And, uh, you know, he, he came in, he's, he, he started, he played linebacker. Of course, in high school, you play everything. Mm -hmm. In a little place like White Court, mm -hmm. you play many positions. Very good athlete and just loves playing the game. All right, two receivers out to this side, two to the other side. Motion goes to the left. There's the handoff, and out there at quarterback is Colton Hippie, and Hippie hands it off on the right side for a gain of about maybe uh, two or three yards on the play, not much more than that. And I believe that was Matt Heinrichs, the ball carrier. So Colton Hippie comes in in replace of Justin Swedish. Swedish was uh, uh, shaken up a little bit uh, in, on that last series, so he may be on the bench for a while. Here's Hippie. Hand off once again this side and go. The Huskies nowhere. should take a timeout here if they've got one. Yes, they have. They've taken the timeout. Now they're going to get the ball back and they could get it into plus territory and hope to get in for a field goal. Timeout. Huskies. Now, this is the one thing that, uh, if you noticed again, the Huskies, in that they came with pressure. They put pressure on. And this is how they have to play. When they lay back, you don't want to give Colton Hippie or any quarterback the amount of time to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. You do, bad things can happen. Kieran Bell was a ball carrier, by the way, on that last play, and uh, mm -hmm. he and Matt Heinrichs switching off at that running back position. Jay uh, Rose, who has, uh, Bray Jose, who rather, has not uh, seen much action in this uh, second quarter. Now he's out there. Zeroni with the punt from about his own 10 yard line. Good kick, center field. Ball is fumbled, picked up once again by Connor Mickle, and Mickle is taken down on a great tackle. Coming up and hitting him hard was number 20, Donovan Yasiko out of Vermillion. I noticed that Mickle in that play was holding on to the ball in the right hand. <laughs> But I also noticed that uh, he got caught up in his own guys. There's no yards called here, so it'll either be five or 15. If it's a 15-yard penalty, and I think it'll be five,
But if it's 15, they're almost in field goal range. Got to take the penalty. It's, uh, again, the same old bugaboo for the Edmonton Wildcats. Yeah, the other reason for taking the penalty here, uh, well, it will anyway because of the start of holding. a series. Oh, oh holding. Cat. Number 10. That penalty is declined. We have no yards yes. on the Wildcats. 15 yards per point of possession. Ooh. First down. That's a big one because now they are in field goal range. And with the wind behind them. That's right. Now, Brad has an opportunity here, and then Coach Walters and he will be talking about it. Are you going to run the ball, put it in a position, or are you going for the touchdown? Well, they've got 16.8 seconds, so that's more than enough time to get at least one, maybe two plays away. If it's passing, it could be three. And they are passing downfield along the sidelines. It is complete on a great reception by number six, Tanner Buchanan. He had the defender all over him, uh, Isaiah Brown, but he was able to pull it down at about the two yard line. Now that's the second one in a game where Brad has put the ball into coverage mm -hmm. and Buchanan has come up. First one was in a touchdown in the north end zone. This one down about the two yard line. Lonhart was uh, hurried. The ball is thrown and it is intercepted. Intercepted or yeah. incomplete. We'll wait and see what the call is. I'm not sure whether it hit the ground or not, but it flew up in the air and one of the uh, Wildcats came down with it at the blue at the uh, goal line, and I believe it was uh, incomplete. 40, 42, Rashid Robinson comes up with the football, but there is an injured Wildcat down there as well, and I believe that is number 92, Cole Milford. Now, ironically, if they do a quick rub wow. out here, they've got time for two plays, even mm -hmm. only there's only 3.4 seconds, but it has to be quick. And this will be very interesting to see what they do. They are going to, I believe they're going to go for it. I don't think they're going to go for a field goal. Wind actually starting to pick up quite a bit now. I don't know if I'd want to be up in that end zone machine on there. And, you, know, <laughs> you want to get anchored to that camera. Injured Wildcat being tended to by the uh, volunteer staff of now, therapists. And, uh, now this is something that the Husky coach has got to be aware of. Because it's an injury, that clock is going to start when it's whistled in. Mm -hmm. Brad has to get his guys on the line and get the play ready to go and do it right at the, at the time they whistled in or they're not going to get two plays. They're just going to get one. This is not like a penalty where it starts at, uh, you know, on the snap of the ball. This will start as soon as the official whistles it in. So what you're saying is no time for a huddle. They shouldn't be. Now, the huddle should be now. And now the only thing, if the Huskies have another timeout, then take it. Uh -huh. You know, then, then it'll start on the snap of the ball. But if they don't, you got to make sure that you're on the ball and get it off. Well, this is something that... The, the Wildcats have enough injuries. They don't need more. We'll be talking with uh, Coach Ian McLean before he heads into the uh, dressing room. I detected a slight smile on his face there the other week. He's got to be, I suppose, reasonably pleased that he's up by 17 to nothing, but... Uh, it's, he, been, it's been a good, it's been a good tough football game for both these teams. Well, the, the, the way the Wildcats are playing, uh, they're playing with heart. I mean, they're they're coming out and they're making plays. Both sides of the ball are making plays on special teams. When well, you got a returner like Brown, he can make things happen very quick. Uh, he's a very good corner. He's been beat twice, once for a touchdown and then once deep on the sideline here by Buchanan. But in both cases, he had perfect coverage and uh, the ball was just put in there and Buchanan made a heck of a catch. So these are things, when you see this kind of football, it's real good football. Uh, Darcy Park, I was talking to him at practice the other night and uh, the one thing that he is very pleased about is the attitude of his players. Uh, last year it was a woe is me kind of thing and uh, mm -hmm. he, you know, this year it just, I think probably because of the, the new coaching staff, uh, he says there's no sign of them getting down on themselves whatsoever. 
Well, and I think a big part of that is that it comes from Coach Park himself. Now, I've had the pleasure of working with, with Coach Park when he was playing the Golden Bears and uh, coaching over there. And he's just such a positive guy himself, you know, and I'm sure that rubs off on the players. Every once in a while, you'll have a young man who just uh, can be a cancer in the locker room and it produces negative feelings in the locker room. And then you have to get rid of that individual. And I'm sure that over the off season, they weeded a lot of those people out if they were in their locker room. And now they got positive people. Well, that's not a good sign there. Cole Milford uh, from Holy Rosary in uh, Lloyd Minster being carried off. Another big injured lineman for the, for the Wildcats. And uh, that's going to be a huge loss for them, even though he is a rookie. Uh, he has played outstanding and has had uh, a number of tackles in the early going of this season. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, again, you hate to see any time that there, there is an injury. Well, they get the play away, and the Wildcats make the stand at the goal line, and John Belmont, that has got to change a little bit as well, going, the, the, going into the dressing room. Now, again, Coach Park's going to take that in, use it as a positive, and build his guys up to just pick it up a little bit, play a little better. The Huskies, they got to look for it again. I'm not sure that they were ready for that snap of the ball. I'm not sure. I think they thought the snap would start on when the, when the, the snap, the clock would start when the snap went instead of when he whistled it in. And that's something the coaches, if it is, they have to look at themselves. All right, I think we're ready to go downstairs, and <clears throat> here's Kevin with Coach Ian McLean. Thanks, Dave. I am here with head coach Ian McLean with the Huskies up 17 to nothing at the half. Uh, all bets are off when it comes to this rival. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we got we to gotta be better all three phases. I got to be better. We should kick two field goals and have another six points, but we didn't, and now we're, we are we got still some work to do. Seems like the, the Wildcats have done a lot of a lot of good things on defense in terms of mixing up coverages, mixing up blitzes. Uh, you're in a good one here today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're a physical team. They're coming after us. We told the guys before the game, you know, this is a game that unless you play it, you don't understand what it's like. So uh, it's a good game, and hopefully we start executing more on all of our phases of the game. And what are you telling your team at the half? I mean, you've missed some opportunities. There have been some penalties. Uh, what, what are you going to have to do to, uh, to finish the job here this afternoon? we got to execute. I mean, we got we got to get points off turnovers. we got to capitalize when we have opportunities. All right. Thank you very much. Coach, that is head coach Ian McLean. And let's send things back upstairs to Dave Rozak and the coach, John Belmont, with the Huskies up on the Wildcats, 17 to nothing here at the half. And a capacity crowd, a great crowd here at Clark Park, guys. The, uh, the west side stands are just about full, uh, Kevin, and, and that's great news. And, of course, over in Big Blue, a bunch of the uh, Wildcat fans sitting over there, and they're enjoying this football game, I'm sure, as well. Well, they're enjoying it a lot more than they thought they were going to enjoy it, I believe. <laughs> yeah, when, when I talked to Coach Ian McLean uh, last week at practice, he said that he wants his squad to treat this game like any other. He doesn't want to talk about rivalries. He doesn't want to get them too excited, and that could be the biggest problem. But... Uh, Right now, I think uh, we may be ready to go back downstairs. We'll be taking a look at uh, some statistics in just a couple of minutes. And uh, once again, we'll put uh, Kevin Don into work. Kevin? Well, thank you very much, Dave. And welcome back to this ICU video broadcast coverage of the Prairie Football Conference. And it is the first chapter in the Battle of Edmonton. I'm joined this afternoon by Mike Astley, board member of the Huskies. And it's a rival that goes back to the 1950s, but it's always entertaining, Mike. Always entertaining. It doesn't matter where the teams are in the standings, Kevin. It's always entertaining, and today's no exception. The Cats are a much better team than they were last year, and uh, so it's a good game out there. They're, they're in it, so uh, we better start playing a little better. That's what I got. And the crowd response, what, what a turnout this afternoon. Oh, on this side of the full on this side, and there's lots of uh, Cat fans over there on the other side. So, yeah, this is great. Now, you've, you've got the hottest team in the PFC right now. Uh, is it too early to start talking about, you know, words like PFC title, Canadian Bowl? Uh, you're obviously very, the, the board, the entire Husky family must be very excited about uh, what's happening this season. We are, Kevin. You know what? It's never too early when you think you have a good team to, to go for it, to say, well, we're, yeah, we're going. For Look it. at we're the trying. score. You know, of course, we've got great teams in front of us. Regina's a great team. And, and uh, of course, Saskatoon, always a great team. I believe they're 3-0 as well. And uh, but we got to win these games that are here in front of us right now, and then uh, 
But man, I'm a little bit nervous about this game to tell you. <laughs> now coming up on September 12th, you've got a lot to celebrate. You you just had the the new inductees into the first uh, in the new uh, the brand new inaugural members of the Husky Hall of Fame. Uh, an awful proud organization, but uh, a great night coming up. And what a great group of people that uh, the Huskies have inducted. Oh, absolutely. It goes from the uh, older guys, uh, the Hendersons and that, way back to the start of the Huskies, all the way up to guys like J.R. LaRose, who, of course, was played with the Eskimos and the BC Lions for many years. So there's a whole bunch of guys, because we haven't done it before, there's a lot of great, great guys to get into that Hall of Fame. So we're really looking forward to September 12th, Gal. It must have been a challenge, but it must have been a lot of fun looking back, too. A real challenge to get that first class in there but everybody was pretty well on the same page as for the people that are in it and the team that's in it the 1962 team so no it was it was difficult but uh, we know there's more coming bit of a labor of love for sure with the score 17 to nothing i want to thank my halftime guest mike astley board member of the edmonton huskies and of course the huskies enjoy a 17 to nothing lead but as uh, my colleagues dave rozak and the coach john belmont will say Anything can happen in PFC football, so stay with us on this ICU video broadcast of PFC football here in week four. Guys, back upstairs to you. You betcha anything can happen. And, uh, you know, we we're just going over the statistic, John, and, and I, was, I was shocked. I mean, the score is 17-0 in favor of the Huskies, but uh, you look at the total net yards, uh, Huskies, 316 yards, the Wildcats, 48 that's right and remember a lot of that is because the huskies have sacked the quarterback of the wildcats many times mm -hmm. another part of it is you look at that 300 plus you say well there should be a lot more points on the board coach mclean mentioned it they're going for the juggler and they're not taking field goals when they could take them so that's cost them six points uh down here at the end i think there might have been a clock issue there that they didn't understand what the rule was and mm -hmm. it could have cost them a second play um, there's a one-man wrecking crew out there, and his name is Brant Verzak. Uh, 86 yards uh, in passing and uh, in running another 58. So that's about 140 yards total for Brant Verzak. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Well, the only way you can shut him down is you've got to converge on the ball with many people. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do because the Husky line is very good. And they're doing it. Brant does a lot of cutbacks. So if you overflow him at all, he's so quick that he will cut back, find his seam, and he's going to get six or seven yards on you. We've seen Brad Lonhart carry the ball quite a bit this season. Uh, this year, not so much. This not game. so much th this game, and he's using his backs really well. And the other thing he's doing is he's mixing it up of how he's doing it. Now, he's carried the ball in short yardage situations very effectively, but uh, you don't see the zone read like you saw from him a year ago right. where he will run the ball a lot. And they're using their backs more, and they've got the receivers he's more confident in, so they're using them. Good point. Uh, speaking of mixing it up, too, uh, look at this. Uh, Connor Mickle, 8 yards uh, re receiving. Harrison Cable, 20. Tanner Buchanan, 85. Connor Bergeson, 26. Burzak, 86. Battenfelder, 20. And Desiatnik, 5. That's mixing up your receivers. It is, and they're using as many of those guys as they can. If you notice with Cable, he doesn't have a tremendous amount of yards, mm -hmm. but they're using them on crossers, what we call the short crossers with over and under routes, different, different types of mixes but he is so sure-handed if he get up into a seam at all he's strong so instead of a five yard gain he could get a nine or ten yard gain the reason he's getting five yards you got to give credit to the wildcats they're doing a very good job in coverage talking about well, we've been talking about the huskies the wildcats as well offensively uh jacob mihalitas uh, with uh, 21 yards, uh, or make, make that 21 yards in, in pass receptions. Zach Burgess, uh, 24. Uh, so they really haven't been passing the ball that much. And that's mainly because, as you mentioned, the Swedish has been sacked a number of times. Well, in both quarterbacks, the, the, the defensive ends of the Huskies are very, very good. Bryce Lee, who to me is the most unassuming guy, but he is the force in that. He, he takes two blockers every time and puts pressure inside. So how now are you going to block all these guys? Plus, they'll bring Nitty or they'll bring Vanderkoop, but they're going to bring linebackers to give you a four or five man rush consistently. And uh, of course, the bugaboo for the uh, Wildcats all season long has been their lack of, uh, of a running game and uh, something like three yards total. Uh, Swedish uh, with four yards himself. 
uh, Bray Josu with the zero and minus one for Matt Heinrichs. And a part of that is again that front of the Huskies. They are so athletic, they're mm -hmm. big, they move, and they tackle well. So if you go on first down with a run and you're second and nine, second and eight, now what do they do? Those defensive ends are getting their butts up in the air and they're coming 100 miles an hour. They're bringing somebody off the edge. So it puts tremendous pressure on these quarterbacks. Well, as uh, Coach Ian McLean told me the other night, the most improved part of his football team has been the offensive line of his of his squad. And the reason for that, I, too, I think, too, is because he got back a couple of players, uh, veterans that he didn't expect to get back this season. That's very true. And, and these guys are playing quite well together. I looked at it today. If you look at these cutback blocks, where the cutbacks that uh, Berzik is, if you look at the offensive line, they're staying on their blocks. So that when those guys, those linebackers try to come back, there's a Husky lineman right in their face and driving them off. So Burzak's getting good seams. Well, it was an interesting end to that uh, second half, or that first half, rather. Uh, the Huskies get that uh, touchdown late in the, uh, in the first half, and then they are on the goal line, and they're stopped by the Wildcats. So given that, uh, we know that they're up 17 to nothing. What is Ian McLean telling his uh, his? Uh, charges I believe exactly what he talked about down below he's going to tell his his players we are not out of this uh, you know we're not we haven't won it they're they're beating us in a lot of aspects of the game we have to play better we have to play with confidence but we have to attack and keep attacking and the other part of it is I think the coaches and and this is this is a small thing but in a way it could be a big thing I think the coaches have to respect the situation if they get a chance for a field goal, they got one of the best place kickers in the Prairie Junior Football Conference. Take the points. Mm -hmm. And if you're in, and, and like I say, I, I don't know, I've talked to Coach McLean about it after. I'm not sure if they knew what the situation was there. It, it's important that you know the clock timing, how that works. Mm -hmm. And this has happened to us before, and that's the reason I know it, because we were caught on that years ago playing the Colts many, many years ago. And... Uh, we ended up in a tie where we could have won the ball game. And, so it happens. As Coach McLean mentioned, too, during that interview with uh, with Kevin, uh, really, uh, they threw away six points on not trying a couple of field goals when they had the chance to. That's exactly right. They could be up uh, by a score of uh, 23 to nothing instead of yeah. 17 to nothing. And what you do when you give that up in a turnover, what happens? You end up now where your opposition has field position. When they do punt to you, even if it's a two and out, you're digging deep out of your own zone. All right, so the goal line stand for the Wildcats. Good news going into the dressing room? Absolutely. That is something you can build on. Also, the, the big part of it is the way you played most of the game. You take those two penalties that they had back to back. You force the guys to understand that we cannot be having those things and then just go out and play. You, you, we talked earlier about uh, the, the attitude of, of uh, Coach Darcy Park and why this team always seems to be able to keep up and stay up. Uh, this year has been really a, a great year for him and his team, even though they are still winless uh, after three games. Well, again, uh, the first game against uh, the Colts, they played very, very well against them. Uh, the game against Winnipeg last week, they played well against them. And of course, Winnipeg hammered the Colts yesterday. So you're looking at a situation, they're playing the Husky stuff who are 3-0. and mm -hmm. So he's getting there with them. And as long as they keep confident, it's going to be there. And his young coaching staff, Andy Pilon, their, uh, their offensive coordinator, was a heck of a, a quarterback mm -hmm. for the Wildcats. And he's a, he's a good football man. And these guys are excited. That young coaching staff's excited. He's just going to grow with the coaches, and they're going to grow with the team. You got that right. And, and really, when I was down at uh, practice the other night, uh, just uh, talking to those uh, coaches, uh, they, even though they are at 0-3, they're still uh, very, very excited about the season. And they think that once they get that first win under their belt, boom, they're ready. And yeah, that could very well happen. And uh, it's going to be interesting because they are not out of this game yet. Uh -huh. And it's going to be very interesting to see in this quarter the first offensive and first defensive teams of both teams and see how they handle it. All right, we're just waiting for uh, Coach uh, Darcy Park to show up downfield uh, so that uh, Kevin can talk to him. And uh, obviously, he's had a lot to say to, uh, to his team. He's just a little bit late with the squad coming out onto the, onto the field. So you can understand that. I could definitely understand that. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, are we ready to go downstairs? I believe we are. So let's uh, go down and uh, let's talk with uh, Kevin Donnan. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. We are waiting for 
uh, head coach Darcy Park, as, as, as both of you mentioned. Uh, lots to talk about, and there is lots of optimism on this Wildcat sideline. I mean, both teams have a good, good representation of alumni, but there's a buzz around uh, Clark Park this afternoon because uh, right now the Wildcats feel they have an opportunity. The Huskies feel like they have to finish the job. So as Coach Belmont mentioned, uh, all bets are off with this rivalry, and uh, it's it's been a fantastic afternoon this afternoon. And just just walking in now to join me is uh, head coach Darcy Park and and uh, Coach Park. As they say, it's it's not the uh, the size of the cat in the fight; it's the size of the fight in the cat. And you guys have an opportunity here. Yeah, I think you know we're just you know we're talking about we started probably five possessions in their zone and came away with no points. Uh, that's a little bit disappointing. Our defense has played well, but again, had opportunities to make interceptions, to take points off the board, had an opportunity at the end to make another play, and, and we just have to finish those. Lots to say about Wildcat pride. You've got to be so proud of your defense. You've been able to get some pressure to the quarterback. What do you have to do to uh, to finish this in the second half and pull off a big upset here? I think we just have to make sure that we're, we're taking the fight to them. We have to get off the ball. We have to establish the run game, be able to play action and hit the open receivers. Okay, thanks a lot, Coach, and best of luck to you the rest of the way. And, of course, let's get this second half underway and send things back upstairs to Dave Rozak and the coach, John Belmont. Gentlemen, it's a rivalry that goes back decades, but we're in for a great second half. I think we are, Kevin. Uh, you know, you, you asked me before the game, what do I think it's going to happen? I thought it was going to be a tight game. Uh, it has been a tight game, perhaps not so much on the scoreboard, but certainly out there on the field, there's been some great battles going on. As I said, uh, smash mouth football uh, up front, no question about that. You know what I find interesting? Uh, in the three games that the Huskies have played, when you look at the first game in Windsor mm -hmm. and then the two games against the Colts, those three games together, they have not been hit as hard as they've been hit here by the Wildcats. <laughs> and the Huskies, now it's going to be interesting. Do they pick up their game and improve and start making those plays where the Wildcats are just stopping them? And uh, for the Wildcats, can they keep that momentum going? It's going to be a fun second half, Dave. Uh, talking with uh, with the Coach Darcy Park, as Kevin was, uh, interesting that he didn't mention uh, anything about the penalties, but I think that was, uh, if, if there is going to be a turning point, as I mentioned, it's going to be those three penalties that they took uh, late in that uh, second half. There's, first half, there's no question, and I guarantee you that was mentioned in the locker room. Yeah. And it will be dealt with. Darcy is a veteran coach. He knows how to bring teams along, and as we talked about earlier, he's building a team. So you want to have them come out of here positive. You don't want to come out on a low. So when he left that locker room, I'll guarantee you it was on a positive. And, you know, the, the, the really sad part about it is, I guess if you're a Wildcats fan, is that those penalties have been coming at really crucial times in the game. They have, but I believe, and I'm not positive on this, but I believe they're cutting down slowly each game on the number of penalties they're getting. And last week's game, 204 yards on 25 penalties. And uh, if we take a look at the uh, statistic from that first half, uh, the uh, Wildcats had seven penalties on 55 yards. So, yeah, you're right. They have cut down uh, quite a bit. And, and now it's where you take them and how you take them. All right, the Huskies will be kicking off to the Edmonton Wildcats into the wind. And out there, as usual, to do the honors is uh, number 18, Cole Sabarin. Sabarin does the kickoffs and the, uh, the punting. James Barnsley does the field goals, and there's a good end-over-end -end kick down to about the 8- or 10-yard line. Taken there by number 81 for the Wildcats, and that is Lucas Howe. Howe has some room down the side, and he is finally thrown out of bounds just over the 45 yard line. What a great job of running by Lucas Howe. Yeah, an interesting thing on that, if you noticed uh, the way a hole opened up, contain got too deep then didn't fight back. I noticed something before the start of this half, just, just guys were coming out. I saw a number of veteran Huskies goofing off on the field. I think that, that some of them are thinking they've got this game in hand. They could be in for a shot. First down for the Wildcats, Colton Hippie at quarterback. He flares one out to the outside. It is uh, dropped by Jason, uh, by Bro, uh, Bray Jusso, Josu and <laughs> I'll get that one right one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough name, huh? Ray Josu. And, 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 you know, it, it's, again, 
that kind of thing that has been hurting the Wildcats so much this season. That's right. Just an easy little swing pass, and uh, Bray takes off before he's got the ball fully. In and his I don't hands. know if you saw it, but Bryce Lee, the nose guard for the Huskies, beat his block and was coming on the quarterback pretty hard. Into the middle, passes. Complete, but fumbled, and taking off with it is Bergmeier. Bergmeier is stopped at the 43-yard line. Like I said, now what's interesting here, you know, he might have been down by contact on that, but they didn't call it. The ball has to come out early. Uh, very good job by Vanderkorp at making that. I kind yeah, of felt like it was good. down by contact too. When I, that's why I yeah. hesitated, but uh, well, referees, of course, we don't have uh, instant replay here, or, or at least the officials don't have access to it. So Now this is the first time in a while that I've seen Brad Lonhart run that fly zone read and he took the ball and came up the field. Made about five. I think he's gonna take this game into his hands. He's the leader out there and he's gonna start making things happen. Berzik, the uh, Lone setback, three receivers to the right side, looking left now, downfield. It is incomplete, short of the intended receiver, number six, Tanner Buchanan. He was being uh, well covered by Jaden Donkey. Now, an interesting thing there, that ball was either underthrown or it was a bad route by Buchanan. If it was an out route, he bent it by a lot and he, he kind of cruised it. And it looked to me like Brad might have thrown a little bit off the back foot too. So, could have been on both of them. All right, but out there at center now for the uh, Huskies is number 27, uh, Brett Vanderkorpet. And he does the long snapping. For the field goal from about the 46 yard line, it's got the length and it is good. He would have made that one from 55 easily. Uh, he hammered that ball and good pin. Uh, excellent snap by Vanderkorpet. And now again, a turnover. The Huskies were able to turn it into points. Although not a touchdown, you turn it into points. Cole Saverin with that 46 yard field goal, and it was a bullet. And that was against the breeze, too. Maybe that's why he kicked it low. <laughs> so with 12.44 to go, it's a 20 or in the first third quarter. It's a 20 to nothing football game in favor of the Edmonton Huskies. Here's Hippie with the pass. It is complete just over the 40 yard line. It'll be taken there by Brandon Rebnor from uh, Bev Facey High School. He comes into this game with uh, two catches for about five or four catches rather for 63 yards. Well, there he is with about six. So it, it, it's a good game, good positive game. And you notice now they're getting rid of the ball real quick. And the way this rush has been coming, it, it's a good thing to do. Second and four. Again, pass to the sidelines. Again, complete. <laughs> Taken by Jacob Mihilidis. And he was being watched on the play by number 24, uh, Gaetano Minto. Again, if you look at Hibby, what he's doing, this he's been around, he's a fifth year player. Mm -hmm. He gets the ball, it's gone now. Mm -hmm. And it has to be because he had six men coming on it. And this is the Huskies putting their pressure on. But their secondary is playing a little soft. Three man front for the Huskies. Into the middle, incomplete. And again, intended for Lucas Howe. He couldn't pull that one down. But a good run. He, had a, he, had, he was open. He was open, but uh, Sam linebacker Vincent Schiffner closed very quickly on that and was right there. If that got it in the hands, I think he would have knocked it out. He was right there. It was pretty good coverage. Second and 10. Ball on the 47 yard line. It'll be an offside call or against the uh, Wildcats. This is going to be against the Huskies. Uh, Vanderkarp at so? the outside linebacker stepped up, was in the neutral zone before the snap of the ball. And uh, oh, they call it against the Wildcats. So you're like smarter than I am. One of the wide receivers uh, cut to the uh, middle and before the ball was snapped, okay. and he was well over the line. They called that. I think if you look at it, you'll see Vanderkorp was up there too. But uh, neither here nor there. That is a break for the Huskies. Right there. Offside. Yeah. On the Wildcats. Number one. 
That penalty is declined. Third down. So the penalty is declined. It will be third and ten. And the Wildcats will be first to kick this one away. And that penalty is, uh, you know, it is a big thing because if it had been on the Huskies, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, what are you? Now you're second and five. Now those quick passes are even easier to do. But the Huskies second and long now against the, the Wildcats. They're bringing heat all the time. Matt Zeroni. That's the a block by blocked. Samuel. Oh, and Shane he's going. Samuels has got all kinds of room. He's got only the kicker to beat. He trips over the 30-yard line. <laughs> We've talked about a Shane Samuel. He's been close on a couple. He's he forced a bad punt. He's been right by them. And this one, he got in front real well, got the hands on the ball. Outstanding job by number seven, O'Shane Samuel from the Huskies. All he had was the kicker to beat, and he was, he was in for a big six points. But... Uh, that old 30-yard line just jumped up and tripped him. <laughs> so I'm sure he did. <laughs> All right, Lonhart still at quarterback, hands it off to Berzik. Berzik stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nice job in there by that uh, big defensive lineman for the uh, for the Edmonton Wildcats, uh, number 96, uh, Jamie Turco. You know what's interesting, Dave, is the uh, defensive line of the Edmonton Wildcats is doing an admirable job against the Huskies' veteran offensive line. And they really are, they're back in that 40. They've been playing a 40 this half. And they're really doing a nice job with it. Now, there you go. Defensive lineman gets in, gets his hand on the ball, a deflection. The Huskies are two and out after a turnover. This is a, a good job by the Wildcats, and the Husky coaches are not going to be happy with this. Veteran uh, defensive lineman Evan Cochisarli is the, uh, he's one of the leaders out there for that uh, Wildcats defense, and uh, they sorely missed him the first couple of games, of the or the first game of the season. He came back last week and, and is really, uh, he picked up 12 tackles in last week's game, so you, you know what kind of an impact he has. Here's another big, long, uh, Field goal attempt, it goes wide and out to the one yard line and still going at the five and still finally tackled was number 22, Isaiah Brown. Uh, that one goes well wide of the, uh, the, the near post. That really did, he hit it well, but he, he it, usually that's in your plant foot. You're aiming the wrong way and, and you end up hooking it. And uh, here's the situation now, it's come out to the 21st down, so we have a block pump by the Huskies, totally negated. No points. 37-yard mm -hmm. field goal attempt by Cole Sabrin. Goes for naught, and it'll be the Wildcats first down at their own 20. Ray Josu is the lone setback. Picks up the ball, takes off with it, has some room to move, and is all the way up to about the 30-yard line. He will be shy of the first down, but again, that's the kind of hole that Bray Josu needs in order to get those little legs moving. He as does, as and he can explode, and that way he's a little like Berzik. I don't think he's as quick as Berzik, but he's very fast. And he gets that pop, and he can, he'll can he make you miss. So this, this is going to be interesting now. Do they go play action pass here and go for it, knowing that there's only inches to go? Is that a T formation out there? Well, it is uh, from alignment, <laughs> but... Josu once again gets the ball, and this time he was going nowhere. In fact, he may have he lost a yard. He or lost a half a yard or so. Yeah. So now uh, it's an able lost over a yard. They're going to have to punt. And that was an excellent job by the Edmonton Huskies. Again, Bryce Lee at the nose. If you watch him, he comes in and he just takes two guys and pushes the pile back. And when uh, the running back tried to cut back, there was nothing there. There was a pile. And it's very, very important everybody does their job. And Lee does his job extremely well. Would you agree with that call? Would you not go with the quarterback uh, sneak? Uh, you know, about a yard to go? what I would call and what other coach calls are relevant because we don't practice with these guys every day. When you practice, you know who your best guys are and you practice those short yardage situations. I think in, in for both teams that when you're in that, it would be easy for me to critique these guys and say they should call whatever. But they work with these people. They know how things go. In this case, I think you have to give a lot of credit to the Husky defense doing what they did. Connor Mickle with a 20-yard run back of that uh, punt. 
Brings the ball up to the 52-yard line. Not only that, but Darcy's bigger than you anyway. So, Boy, I don't want him at me. <laughs> <laughs> Lonhart, pass into the middle, incomplete. Over the head of the intended receiver, and that was, uh, again, Connor Mickle. And Mickle was looking for some interference from... Uh, from the officials, but he wasn't going to get it. Uh, Riley Thompson from Medicine Hat was all over him. And Brad has missed a few receivers yeah. today. He has not been as accurate as he was. And if you remember, his first game of the season in Windsor, he was not accurate. He was not happy with himself. 7.51 to go in the third quarter. Lonhart fumbles the snap, gets it away, and it's a little swing pass to the outside. Great job by Brad Lonhart to keep his cool even though he fumbled that snap and uh, got it away uh, out there to number 28 from the Huskies, uh, Tristan Kohler from H.J. Cody. And, you know, here's the situation again. You, you get a, I don't know if the snap was that bad. It didn't look great, but I think Brad could have handled it. Uh, something is going on. He's trying to force things maybe and say, just relax, get up and play. Uh, it, it's a big thing in the Wildcats. They're, they're starting to get their momentum going. Sabarin with a low end over end. Bounces at the 30, taken there by number 81, Lucas Howe. And Howe this time is not going to go anywhere, but I think we're going to have... Uh, It'll be a horse collar horse tackle. tackle. Felito's up on the, on the jersey and... Uh, you know, I, these are mistakes that are made by bad feet. And I'm not saying this young man, he's got real good feet. He can really move. That's laziness. Mm -hmm. He stopped his feet moving, just reached. Instead of getting to the man with the speed he's got, he can get to people, get after him. Instead, he reached and grabbed. And uh, coaches are talking to him about it right now. And they're going to get on him. And these are the penalties that the Wildcats were getting. Now, the Huskies, they've just given the Wildcats pretty good field position. On their own 42-yard line, Colton Hippie coming in late in the uh, first half, replacing Justin Swedish at quarterback, and he's looking downfield, gets the pass away. It is incomplete, just over the arms of number 83, Carter Lawson, and uh, the, the Wainwright uh, grad had some room if he was able to pull that one down. And he's tall. He was covered by Gatano Minnow deep, and Minnow was in good position, but Minnow got turned a little bit. And, and a lot, there's coaches teach this differently, and I'm not sure how Coach Nemi Okita coaches this uh, with, the, with the Huskies, but it's the way you turn at the end of the play, and the way he turned there, he was not in a good position, and uh, the ball went over him, and it could have been caught. Well, in good position to take that pass for the, uh, for the Wildcats was uh, Zach Burgess, and on that play, I saw something different out of Colton Hip. He was cool. He was he was uh, he was ready to get that pass away. He spotted the receiver and got it to him immediately. And what he did stepped into the pocket. Exactly. The wash went outside. He stepped up, made a very good play on it. Threw it off his front foot just like they teach you? Yeah, absolutely. All alone at the 15-10. Stepped out of bounds. bounds. At about the 17-yard line. And again, that was number 83. The uh, young rookie from Wainwright, 6'1", uh, 175-pound receiver, Carter Lawson. Lawson, I mean, there was nobody near him. Oh, they had a blown coverage. Yeah. You had a... a whatever, whether it was zone or man, the coverage was totally blown. You had a receiver wide open. Lost flank to this side. Three receivers to the other side. Into the middle, pass is incomplete. There is going to be a, an interference call and it'll be going against the Huskies, number 24, Gaetano Minto, who kind of bumped into the receiver from behind. It's uh, one of those things that happens. I don't think the coverage was that bad on that and uh, I'm not sure that was interference, but that's what the official called, so be it. The thing is that the Huskies have been playing soft with their, with their coverage, and Pass the Wildcats taking oh, advantage of it. And Pass now if you start closing we'll hard, foul. you overclose, you hit people. So you, it, it, it's, it's an interesting thing, and I know the coaches don't teach a lot of things that are going on out here. Huskies just secondary is not playing that well. Golden Hippie. From the shotgun, man open in the end zone and a great defensive play by the Huskies, number 15, Brandon Mellon, the uh, JP fourth, uh, fourth year uh, defensive back, uh, just 
pulling that one down, just knocking it down at the last minute. Uh, he played that very well, was in position. You watch him turn up inside and uh, make the play. That, that is a, an excellent play for a defensive back to make. He could have got the pick, you know, and uh, I'm sure he's kicking himself because he didn't. Second and 10, ball intercepted. That is. And making up for an earlier mistake was number 24, Gaetano Minto stepped in front of the receiver and picked it off. First down, Huskies. Now this, David, is the example of the athleticism that Gaetano Minto has. And I know he's probably angry at himself with the deep ball that was caught on him. And if you look at it, he jumped that route and went right mm -hmm. at the ball. Yep. Do you remember when he got the interference call coming inside? Yep. He was trying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out, got a penalty. But here he does it again, makes the play. Very uh, aggressive. And that's the way, that position that but all of those, all of that secondary, you're aggressive, and they have to play that way to be good. When they're not aggressive, they're not real good. Yanchuk back in at quarterback, Tommy in quarterback. for the uh, for the Huskies. We saw him earlier for a series. And now he's back in there, and uh, just if you if we get a chance, and, and I hope we do, I'm really impressed with the arm of this young man. He does. He's got a very live arm, and uh, as as live an arm, he's a very sharp young man too. He's under, learning to understand this offense really well. Yanchuk. Into the middle, pass complete to uh, Connor Mickle. And there's an example right there. I mean, that ball was on a string. It was, it was a little low. And so now you're the third down, yard to go. They will punt it away. Now the nice thing about it was that was a safe pass. You got in into the middle of a zone, popped the ball in there quick. And even for the punt, it gives you more room to deal with. So the gain was eight. It'll be second or third, and rather, and two. And as uh, John Belmont mentioned, the Huskies will be forced to kick this one away. Cole Sabrin almost blocked. Ball bounces down at about the 45-yard line. It's picked up there, and still with the ball is number 22, Isaiah Brown. Uh, I how did he do that? <laughs> Isaiah Brown still running and finally taken down. My goodness, Isaiah Brown. I, I looked down just for half a second. All of a sudden, he was clear. And the, re <laughs> the reason that happens, Dave, is he kept his feet moving yeah. all the time. Even though guys were grabbing him and wrapping him now, I think there's a no yards call on this. So that'll be negated. And uh, that would have been a five yard no yards anyway. But uh, just an excellent job by Isaiah Brown to keep those feet moving and, and force everything downfield. They're bringing it down 15. Number nine, 15 yards from the end of the play. So this had to be toward the end of the play yeah. mm -hmm. or maybe in the pile. Big uh, break for the Edmonton Wildcats with 3.52 to go in the third quarter. They trail 20 to nothing in the Battle of Edmonton. Colton Hippie into the middle, incomplete. Intended out there for number 81, Lucas Howe, and just a matter of overthrowing Howe. I mean, I, I looked like he should have had it, but uh, there was a lot on that football. Well, there was a lot on the ball, but also Cole Lindbergh is in there, linebacker, I guess replacing Darian Nitty, and he should have had the pick. Mm -hmm. The ball was right through his hands, and uh, it's one of those things. Uh, now the Wildcats get another shot, and we'll see what they do. Three receivers to this side, looking over here. Pass, it is complete at the five yard line and uh, taken there by number 81, uh, Lucas Howe once again. And uh, Howe will pick up about uh, maybe three or four yards on the play. It'll be third and goal now. Two things with this. One, all credit to Colton Hippie because he got pressure on him early. He put that ball on the line where it had to be. And now they'll go, they're gonna go for a touchdown. They're not gonna try for a field goal. This will be interesting. Third and goal from the five. Colton Hippie, Bray Josu is in the backfield. Josu in there to block and the pass over the arms of the intended receiver and that was 83 Carter Lawson once again. Lawson was looking for an interference call. He wasn't going to get it. And uh, you know, full, full measure to the Wildcats to go out there and get it. They knew they really had nothing to lose at this point. 
not just that, but it's the momentum thing with the offense. Now they're moving it down. They've been doing this consistently. And if you remember against the Winnipeg Rifles, they moved it down. What did they do? They were ready to tie the game. They fumbled on the goal line. Right. Here you got now they're in third down and mm -hmm. five. Overthrow it. Again, it looked to me like Hippie might have overstriped on the ball. Let's go downstairs. Here's Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. Husky sideline down here. Lots of lots of attention on Darian Needy and on Skylar Schellenberg. Schellenberg is out for this game, taking a long look at his left knee and, and doing some taping. I'm sure they'll be taking a look at things a little later this week. But uh, well, lots of lots third. of attention on Darian Needy's right ankle, guys. All right, we'll keep an eye on him. He's down just below us here on the bench, uh, being looked after by the training staff. Now there are flags on the field. All over the place. I'm not sure what it is. I uh, didn't get that last play. There's an ejection by the looks of it. Coming into the game is Tanner Buchanan. This is an ejection from number 17 for the Wildcats. This will be a 25-yard penalty. Matt Zeroni is being escorted Wildcat. off the field by the officials. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, he is not a happy camper at this point, wondering what the heck did I do. But uh, we'll see if we can catch this on the, on the replay, if we can get back that far to, uh, to see what happened. But uh, Zeroni, there you see him. He's uh, walking off. And uh, that's got to hurt. I mean, he is, he is probably... Well, he's he's one of the top three uh, punters and kickers in this uh, in this uh, league, and he's also one of their top defensive backfielders. He is, and he's he's a very solid football player. And uh, here we are. Now yeah, we're getting ready for the next play. So First and ten for the for the Huskies, and the quarterback keep on that little play action Brad from Brad Lonhart. He gets down to about the. 48 yard liner so he needed to get to the 47 so we'll see where they mark it but he's going to be very close to a first down and you can see where the momentum is starting to change a little bit once again the, the Wildcats had it earlier on in this uh, quarter but now the, the Huskies picking things up motion goes to this side pass it is complete incomplete in and out of the hands of uh, the receiver Sam Clayton out of Bev Facey He's a, a young rookie, so they've got a bunch of the rookies uh, in there playing now for the uh, for the Huskies. They do have some in there, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, there again, a bad snap to Brad, and he had to get it up and get it out pretty quick. So there's little things where they're shooting themselves in the foot here. It's going to cost them. Two setbacks. Play action once again, and the pass this time complete. Nicely taken there by number 80. For the Huskies, and that is Sam Clayton once again, and uh, the Beth Basie guy from he's a young rookie, six foot three, two hundred pounds out of Sherwood Park, and uh, he, he uh, pulled that one down nicely. Now again, there's a crosser, a deep crosser on that one. He had about eight yards in depth on it, and uh, ended up getting some pretty good yardage. Not, not to mention about six inches in height as well on the defender. There's that little flick forward to Grant Berzik, and Berzik is taken down. I think there's going to be a. Uh, a face masking call going against the Wildcats here, or a, a horse collar, I'm not sure. But Bursick went down kind of strangely. It's a horse collar, and uh, they call that right away. Again, now the Wildcats are, are killing themselves because they have the Huskies down on the five yard line. Mm -hmm. First down, run the play, didn't seem like a lot of yardage. 25 yard ejection penalty. Huskies get field position. Here, the Huskies get a first down. Looks like they're doing pretty good then. Boom, a 15 yard. So this is what kills you. Oh, the Huskies are in field goal range now. From the 35 yard line, the pass complete over on this side to uh, Connor Mickle. And Mickle will pick up maybe four yards, perhaps. Three yards. Three yards. Yep. There you got a little kind of like a swing pass or a flat pass and, and what happened there, the Wildcats played that real tough. They got on the blockers right away, brought an extra man. Makes it very hard to deal with. Four receivers on this side. The pass is complete at the 25-yard line, taken by the big guy, number six for the Huskies, Tanner Buchanan, the six foot three, 190 pounder from St. Albert. And uh, they've got two yards to go or a yard and a half to go, so it'll be interesting. 
Will Coach McLean go for the field goal or is he gonna go for it? He's going for it. Now again, remember what he talked about at halftime? Mm -hmm. This might come back to, to haunt him a little bit. Why, for them, I know they believe they can get it. You're running out of time. You gotta call a timeout. Oh boy. Got it away. And he does not, oh he might. I. I kind of doubt if they have the first down. Well, he did get it. They needed to get to about the 18-yard uh, line, I believe. He does I'll have it. the 22-yard line, so he does have it. And uh, just one of those broken plays. I mean, really, like you said, they were running out of time. They were running out of time, and Brad took it on his own shoulders, and he knew he had had success outside. He called it and just went. And got it, but th this is something the coaches are going to have to look themselves a little bit on this. That should not have happened. So at the end, or at the end of the third quarter of play, it is the Edmonton Huskies leading the Edmonton Wildcats in the Battle of Edmonton by a score of 20 to nothing. Interesting again in that third quarter. What what caught them? We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, I want to talk about some of the sponsors: uh, Hertz Equipment Rental. The Edmonton Eskimos, the Glen Sather Sports Medicine Clinic, FC Edmonton, and of course the Eskimo Excavators Limited. Uh, without their help uh, and and sponsorship, uh, yeah. uh, the Edmonton Huskies could not be where they are. And uh, right now, let's uh, go down to uh, Kevin Donovan. Thanks a lot, Dave. There's a special event coming up for the Wildcats later this month, coming up on September 23rd at 7 o'clock. The Wildcats will celebrate their four, the 40th anniversary of their 1977 national championship team. Of course, the next day or the 23rd will be the game against uh, Hamilton. That is, of course, the rematch of that 40th anniversary national title game. So a big event coming up for the Wildcats. Make sure you check the Edmonton Wildcats website. Of course, these two teams will be on a league by week next week, but on September 16th, the rubber match, round two of the Battle of Edmonton will happen right here at Clark Park coming up on September 16th at seven o'clock. Don't miss it. And of course, we've still got a lot of football left in this one, guys, coming up here in the fourth quarter. Dave, coach, back to you. Thank you very much, Kevin. I want to mention too, on uh, September the 23rd, uh, it is going to be the 40th anniversary of uh, the last time the Edmonton Wildcats uh, took on the Hamilton Hurricanes in the uh, uh, championship bowl in Hamilton. They won that game over the Hamilton Hurricanes by a score of uh, 28 to nothing. And uh, the other night uh, at uh, Sherwood Park, uh, the coach, Coach Laz, Jim Lazarick, was honored by the Strathcona County uh, Hall of Recognition and inducted into that hall. And what a great night that was and what a great football game that's going to be on the 23rd. Uh, the reunion of those two teams and a lot of the uh, former Wildcat players will be there. It's going to be a lot of fun to uh, to talk to those guys. I know I talked to a few of them the other night, and boy, it was great to bring back some of those uh, terrific memories from the 1977 year. You know, Coach Laz does such a great job, and did such a great job with the Wildcats in those years, and a class guy, absolutely wonderful individual, and uh, he's also one of the best basketball coaches we've ever had in this province. The pass complete to uh, number 80 from the Wildcat, from the Huskies, rather, Sam Clayton. Uh, the Beth Casey rookie is uh, getting a lot of action here in uh, late in the football game and uh, doing well. He's a big kid. We six, have a holding six, call three. on the Huskies, and I believe it's on Gunner Thoreau, number 52. I think at this point, Brad Lonhart, being the uh, uh, veteran that he is, is doing a great job of, of just running the clock out and uh, uh, giving his team uh, as much of, much of opportunity offensively as he can. I think Brad's playing quite well. He, he's... Uh... That one almost picked off. Now there, there's a situation. He tried to feather the ball into the receiver, and the uh, Wildcats played the defense fairly well, made the play. Just off the fingertips yeah. of Riley Thompson. Now Cole Sabrin is going to try a 35-yard field goal from this hash. Now, if you remember, he pulled the last one right, mm -hmm. and you got a northwest to southeast wind. This could happen again. The ball is it. up, it's got lots He's of got length. It. 
out of the end zone and through the uprights. He straightened that one right out. He put it right down the pipe. 23 nothing in favor of the Edmonton Huskies over the uh, Edmonton Wildcats. Getting back to that uh, event on Thursday night, uh, the, a number of the Wildcat players were there from that uh, 1977 team. And, well, I'll tell you what, some of the stories that they, they told about uh, Coach Laz and uh, uh, his ability to, to bring that football team together in less than a year, actually, from a last place team to a national championship in a couple of years. Boy, I'll tell you, that, that, that's, that's great coaching right there. It really is, and, and as we said many times, he is an absolutely wonderful coach, and uh, we wish him all the best. We know he's got health issues he's going through at this time, but we think the world of him, and I know all his former players think the world of him. Jacob Mihalides, the intended receiver. The ball was thrown behind him, so it'll be second and 10. Ball on the 35-yard line, 13.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Again, on that play, Gatano Mina was playing soft coverage, and they're kind of just want to keep everything in front of them now, I think. Pass on the run well out of the reach of uh, number 81, Lucas Howe. And that incomplete pass will result in a third and 10. So the pass is incomplete, and uh, the Wildcats will have to kick this one away once again. And when... <laughs> When you look at this, now the Coach Park might change quarterbacks here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a situation where Hippie missed badly on that pass. He's missed on a couple, and other times he's looked really good. So just the confidence isn't there with he and the receivers. They have a, a young man from uh, Edmonton uh, who is a rookie on this team that they would like to see get some action, and he just might, uh, Cody Olson. Off the punt, taking off with it to the far side is Connor Mickle. He gets around Bray Josu, and Josu is able to drag him down at about the 45-yard line. If uh, if he'd gotten around Josu, he was gone, but we've Connor got two Mickle flags out there. Two flags, number 39 got tangled up with one of their people. He was chasing. He could have backed off, and there would have been nothing, but this is going to come back probably to about the 45-yard line. And uh, it's one of those things, 39 for the Huskies. Francis. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's a mistake. Coach Reed's not going to be happy about that. You got an individual with nickel speed. You know, if you're behind a man, let him go. Just let him go. You're not going to be able to block him. So that moves the ball all the way back to about the 44-yard line. And the Huskies starting over in their own zone with 12.45 to go. And that's a 20 yard change. Yeah. Motion goes to this side. Lonhart still at quarterback. Pass in, in and out of the arms of uh, Grant Berzik. You don't see him and make that mistake very often. Oh, no, not too often. The ball's a little high on him and uh, it just, I'm sure that he, he would like that shot back. Again, quick pressure, that was a quick screen, but uh, makes it second and 10. and. Now, let's see if the Wildcats really bring some heat on Lonhart. Again, motion to this side. Four Here receivers. comes the Mack linebacker. There's the pass. It is complete at the 50-yard line to oh, Harrison God. Cable. And he'll pick up a gain of about maybe seven, eight yards on the play. We'll call it eight. And he's hurting right now. It took a pretty good hit. And that's Cobra, the op open corner, put a good hit on Cable, and uh, I don't know what's hurt here, but he's feeling it. Cobra in there replacing Jeremy on this, who uh, was injured last week and unable to play today, but uh, he gets off uh, under his own steam, not, uh, not a problem. I think he just wanted his name on radio. Uh, or on the web. On, on the web, I guess it is. Uh, <laughs> we're up in the big time now. <laughs> on the podcast. But you gotta be, uh, you got to be impressed with, with the receiving core of this Huskies team. They've they are solid. Job. They are solid. There's no question about that. Sabarin to kick this one away. High snap, pulls it down, gets it away. Bouncing down at the 30-yard line. He gets a good bounce all the way down to the 15. It'll be taken there by Lucas Howe. And now what you don't see, but, but on that punt, 
Jason Brown is one of the up backs. Did a tremendous job on keeping the pressure off of Cole Sabrin. He was able to wash the man out and the, the man had position was coming hard, but he made an excellent block. If not, that ball could have been blocked. So the ball is uh, down on the Wildcats 21 yard line and they've got 11 and a half minutes to go to try and uh, get something on the scoreboard here. We have a new quarterback in the lineup and that is number 16, Cody Olson from Harry Ainley and the uh, young rookie passes off to the uh, receiver Jacob Mihalides and he picks up about eight yards on the play. So we get a chance to see this youngster and uh, I know you're pretty impressed with him. Well, I've watched him. I've known Cody since he was a little kid. He come through the Western Raider program and uh, the Adam Pee Wee Banner program. And then his final year, I think he played midget with the Mustangs. But he's a young man, of course, the youngest of the Olsen boys. And uh, Jordy Olson was the first and was a very good quarterback with the Wildcats. He's now the quarterback coach with the Wildcats. And then you have Brandon Olson, who's a very good slot, number eight. He's injured this week, but... Uh, Again, a very good football player. So here we are with three Olsons playing for the Wildcats. Gee, are there any more out there? <laughs> I don't know. They could. They could be. <laughs> if they are, they'll be playing for the Wildcats in the not too distant future. He gets a good pass away and a nice catch by Miolides. Uh, there is a timeout on the field called by the Wildcats. They were short a, a man in the huddle, and he didn't get back in time for them to call the play. So uh, uh, Coach Park wisely calling a a timeout with 10.50 to go. Well, on Saturday, September 30th, the Huskies will be That's a tough thing. You know, as a coach, you don't want to be wasting timeouts in these like situations, but with young teams, you get those mistakes, you have to use them. All right, Olsen is over center. Molson go, or the motion goes right. There's the handoff to Josu. Josu tries to follow the blocking and is piled up just over the line of scrimmage after a gain of about a yard or two. Now here's something interesting. They ran that as like a, just like a hard lead into the boundary. Yeah. And if you noticed, Olsen bootlegged out of there. Mm -hmm. Now years ago, Jordan Olsen was a very good bootleg quarterback. And he drove teams nuts because he could move so well and he had a line that was very good. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they'd pull her center literally pull her center, bring him around, and would lead for him. Now he would pass off or he'd run off it, and he was deadly on that. They got a new offensive coordinator a few years ago, came in and changed him. In other words, didn't have that bootleg in. And I, I know every team in the league was so thankful they didn't have that boot in because he was so successful with it. Well, I'm looking, they're setting the boot up right now with young Cody Olson, and he's a lot like his older brother. Uh -huh. He can run very well, too. So it'll be third <coughs> and the nose of the football to go for the Wildcats. Olsen at quarterback. He'll step forward. Gets a good push and will have the first down easily. So that was that was a good surge by the uh, by the offensive line of the Wildcats. It really was, and it came kind of on the on the field side. The nose guard of the Huskies got a real good push, mm -hmm. but everything on this side of the line caved and just drove back, and uh, Olson was able to angle in for the first down. That was a very good play by the Wildcats. So they marked the ball between the 32 and 33 yard line. Olson working out of the shotgun now. Looking downfield, passes, it is incomplete. I think it hit the ground, it did, so they rule it incomplete and intended again for Carter Lawson, who all of a sudden has become the favorite uh, receiver of these quarterbacks. Well, it's interesting what, what they have in the package for Cody Olson. He won't have the whole package mm -hmm. in what, what they have for Hippie and, and for uh, Swedish. Swedish because he, you know he's, he's very young. But he will have certain things that he's good at, and that's what those coaches are going to call. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't get the Make reps the other two guys get. So that's right. Uh, back in the pocket once again. Now he takes off with it. He was going to call his own number, and uh, he did. He'll have a short gain, if any, about a couple of yards or so, but uh, there was a flag in the back. We have a holding there. call, and then they'll decline that, I believe. That was second down, so they'll decline it and force him to punt. 
So they marked the ball just shy of Holden. the 35-yard line. Wildcat, number 61. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is third down. So third and seven. And that'll bring up a third and eight. Now, third I wouldn't be eight. a bit surprised if we don't see Tommy Yanchuk in here for the rest of the game. Early. All right, let's see who's going to be doing the punting here for the uh, for the Wildcats. Probably be Barnsley, I would think. Yeah, it is number 37, James Barnsley. And that's Just going to be shot. roughing the kicker, and it's going to be a first down for the Wildcats. And taking it up to the center field stripe for the Huskies was number 85, uh, Keaton Zachikowski. And that's the third man, number 85, Keaton Zachikowski. Zaychikowski, uh, another rookie out of uh, Paul Kane in St. Albert. So we'll wait and see what the call is. It will be roughing it the kicker. It has to be roughing yeah. the kicker, but they also showed a holding call on the Huskies. I don't think they'll tandem those. They might. If they do, it's going to be a big one against them. But I believe that was 34, Jacob Battenfelder. I could be wrong. But it looked to me like he got Honest in. Roughness on the kicker, on the Huskies. I'm holding number 43 on the Huskies. 25 yards from previous line of scrimmage. Wow. So That's a, that is a big penalty. And uh, so now the Wildcats are in plus territory, sitting in good position. Now that Keaton Zakowski you're talking about out of St. Albert, his dad, Sean Zakowski, was an outstanding quarterback with the Wildcats. But also, he was our quarterback coach with the Huskies in our national championship years. And we I've known Keaton since he was a little fella. He was always at our practices. And wonderful, wonderful young man. Good, good football player. So Olsen shovels it off to uh, Ray Josu. And uh, Josu will make it up to, well, he's going to be actually shy of the line of scrimmage by about a yard or two, two yards. So it'll be second and 12. There's also a flag on the play, and I think it's going they'll, to be going against. They'll decline it. Yeah. Number 64. That penalty's declined. Result of the play is second. They got a second and 12, mm -hmm. so. Two yards lost on the play. They're going to decline those ones. That'll bring up second and 12. Now. That'll move the ball back to the 52-yard line. But again, what we've talked about earlier, Dave, it's the speed of the Huskies mm -hmm. front and their linebackers forces that people to hold. And... That makes it very, very tough. The Husky defense is awfully good on that. All kinds of flags. There's uh, one along the line of scrimmage, which would indicate offside, and uh, another one behind. But usually that's procedure. Yeah. Procedure cool. against the Wildcats. Darcy Park's got to be just tearing his hair out. Well, again, it's, it's getting procedure. late in the game, and uh, he's 16. got younger guys in. Yeah. Remain. I think he, he's veteran enough to know these things are going to happen. He's got to get these kids some playing time. And Wouldn't you think that it would be important, though, and I'm not second-guessing him, but I, wouldn't it be important to get some points on the board? Well, I think he think, believes he can do it with these guys. Okay. He really believes that. And uh, the other guys haven't. So now there's a case. The pressure came, and there's a young quarterback. You That's saw Bergmeyer coming hard on that, and boom. That ball's in the ground. And yet he had plenty of time to get the ball to the, re the receiver. This is the experience he needs. If he's going to be their quarterback, he's got to get time doing this. Yeah. Alex Veer also making a rush. Now Alex Veer, again, he's the big tall kid. 6'4", 6'5", 215 pounds. When he fills out, he's going to be a tremendous load. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, He's one of the best defensive linemen, talent-wise, that I've ever worked with. He, he's got a good sense for the game and because he's played since he was a little fella. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, the Huskies are very, very happy with him. So Barnsley gets a good uh, punt away and a run back of about maybe five or six yards on the play for the Huskies. And that'll move the ball up to the 35-yard line with 7.46 to go. Now, there's another Why penalty on the yeah. play, and it's going to be against the Wildcats. And I'm not sure what it is. Well, let's see what the referee has to say. Must be holding. Holding on the Wildcats, number 13. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Kyle Miller, the head referee for this afternoon's football game. 
Here comes Janchuk into the game. <coughs> so I think we can see him for the rest of this contest. Tommy Janchuk. He's a lefty, too. As I recall. No, he's right handed. He's right handed? Yeah. There's that little fly zone read, and he just oh, took yeah, it ahead. Now, yeah. he's got a little more speed than Brad, mm -hmm. and he's a little taller than Brad. He doesn't have the experience, but uh, that youth, that got him an extra yard. Gain of five, second and five, with uh, the ball on the 40-yard line. Brent Berzik, uh, Brent Berzik is still in the uh, in the game for the Huskies rolling to his out, to the outside is Yanchuk. He takes off with it again, and is hit and hit hard at about the 45-yard line and behind number 45, uh, Riley Thompson. Thompson came in and hit him with the knee, and it wasn't intentional, but just hit him pretty hard. Okay, let's go downstairs quickly. Here's Kevin. Thanks a lot, Dave. Of course, coming up. Our next ICU video procast comes up on September 16th when these two teams will meet once again here at Clark Park at 7 o'clock. And, of course, we've had such a great response here on minor football day here at Clark Park between these two teams. We want to fill Big Blue coming up on September 16th following the Huskies and Wildcats bye week. So make sure you uh, make sure you come on down to Clark Park. And if you can't join... If you can't join this game in person, make sure you join us here on ICU Video and our ProCast coverage of PF's football each and every week. But, to, but next week, we get the week off, guys. I think I'm going to go fishing. <laughs> Good time of the year for it. There you go. I know you'll be out on the lake at, at Pigeon. I'll probably be working out there doing something. <laughs> 6.14 to go here in this uh, fourth quarter. You haven't put the clubs away yet, have you? Oh, no, no, but I always keep my fishing rod in my, in my golf bag just in case, you know. Well, you know, a good day's fishing beats a great day's golf any day, right? Yeah, well, I use it for fishing the golf balls out of the water that I put in there. <laughs> just remember, he's there a lot, too, so I, that's where he learned to fish. Better fisherman than the golfer, sure. There you go. The ball on the 49, or make that the... Uh, 51 yard line, the Huskies on the move. Tommy Yanchuk, play action, thinks about taking off and then is taken down from behind on a nice tackle by Rashid Robinson out of Holy Trinity High School here in Edmonton. There is a penalty on, on the field. Something happened late. Oh, we got a. It's going against the Wildcats. Looks like an interference call. Illegal contact on the Wildcats, number 11. 10-yard penalty, first down. Illegal contact. And that'll bring up so that'll move the ball a little bit closer to the end zone. Again, we've talked about this, but wow. starting halfway through the third quarter, and now all of a sudden the penalties are picking up again. That's right. And this is what uh, as we've talked about. Coach Park is trying to get out of these guys. Here's Yanchuk. Little flare pass on this side. Complete to number 86. Zach Des Desayatnik, and uh, he takes off with it with a good, uh, a good reception and a great run, about uh, 20 yards or so. That was a very good job. He had an opportunity to go inside, but uh, it worked better for him outside. 26-yard gain. Yanchuk being hurried, gets the pass away in time, and again is Desayatnik, and he is taken down after... Another good gain of close to eight yards, but there is a flag down here. This ball is going to the one yard line. That's roughing the passer, I believe. Roughing the passer, Wildcats, number 47. 15 yard penalty, first down. So that comes after the play. It's added on, it comes right to the one. Now the Huskies will probably bring the big guys in, bring the uh, fullbacks in. Here they come. Probably get that tight end, either double tight or They'll get Battenfelder to tight end, and Runge will play like a lead fullback. Runge is out there on the right side. Yeah, they're uh, going to it. Kind of like a slot back. Yeah, he is doing that. So I expect him to come across, 
and I'm to on. lead on the, on the other side or even lead right in on the outside of Battenfelder. So the Huskies call a timeout and Tommy Yanchuk will go to the bench and, and we'll see whether your prediction will come true or not on, on that uh, on that on that play call. But, uh, you know, all, all of a sudden, well, I mean, we talked about the penalties, you know, ad infinitum. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the rookies out there and probably a lot of rookie rookie penalties being called. And again, when you're playing a veteran team, mm -hmm. you're not quite as quick and reacting because you're not seeing it like like what the veterans see it. Mm -hmm. So you're a little slower and you end up reaching. You end up doing things that you shouldn't be doing. You should be letting your legs get you to where you have to make a block, make a tackle, whatever. Mm -hmm. When you reach, you either hold or you can end up grabbing a face mask or a horse collar, whatever it is. So we'll, we'll see now. If, you know, the other thing they can do here, Tommy's so strong, they just quarterback sneak it. Tommy Yanchuk at quarterback from the one. There's the Hand lead. off is to Grant Berzik, and he's over the goal line. Nobody touching him, really, until it was too late. Grant Berzik. And they just ran that little lead backside with Rudge blocking out and uh, Battenfelder blocking in, and they got a pretty good seam. Pretty nice hole to go through. He was uh, tackled right at the goal line, but as I say, a little bit too late by Jack Jones. Yeah, he was over in... Yeah. He was in the end zone when he was hit, I think. <laughs> you know. All right, here's the point after. Saburn, ball is up, and it is through the uprights. And uh, again, almost hits our cameraman up there. <laughs> he's focused, focused on his job. And, and oh, he's got to be focused. Otherwise, we don't get to see what's happening. That's right. <laughs> 504 to go. In the uh, football game, 30 to nothing now in favor of the uh, of the Huskies. And uh, as 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 play moved on here in the third quarter and then into the fourth quarter, you could just see the Huskies just slowly taking over. Uh, we're going to go downstairs here. Let's go down, down to Kevin. Thanks so much. The Huskies athletic staff are taking a look at number 24, Gaetano Minto. Seems to be some concern about the about the neck, especially at the. Uh, lower part of the neck, if you will. So they're taking some precautions here. Overall, Huskies have a big lead, but the injuries are starting to pile up down on this sideline, guys. Huskies ready to kick off from their own 45-yard line. Here goes Sabrin. Low driving kick, almost to the goal line. Taken there by Howe to the 20. Still going and taken down from behind on a nice uh, shoestring tackle, and uh, in there, the Jacob Battenfelder. Again, a very good special teams man. Vince Schiffner, number 33, was down and in perfect position to hit. He made the hit, but didn't wrap up. Uh -huh. And again, he's, now we're talking a second year player who's gonna be a very, very good linebacker in this league and the starting Sam linebacker for the Huskies. Really impressed with the uh, with the run back ability of Lucas Howe in this game. He's uh, broken a couple of big ones this afternoon, and they've blocked it pretty well for him. Yeah, uh, the Wildcats have done a commendable job on that. There's the handoff up the middle, Bray Josu, and uh, Josu will pick up close to about seven, six or seven yards on the play. Absolutely, that does a very good run, well blocked. And you'll notice that uh, Olsen was hit hard after he let go of the football, but uh, there was yeah. no call. Well, that's because it was a run and play, and they thought he had the ball he, because they run that zone read. So, so did the guy who tackled him. Yeah, and that's it. That's what happens. You got remember, you got a young nose guard in there. You got a young end on the far side, and there they try it again, and uh, that was going nowhere. I mean, Josu just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. He just absolutely shut her down. Uh, we got Sam Lower in at, at nose guard now, the backup nose guard for the Huskies. And of course, Alex Veer has been playing last couple of series as the, uh, as the rush end. So we got young guys in there on that defense. James Barnsley forced into the punting duties with the ejection of uh, Matt Zeroni, he gets a short one away about the 50 yard line, the ball bouncing around. There'll be an O yards call, obviously, as taking off with it is uh, Connor Nickel. 
And Mickle runs it back close to about 20 yards or so, 23 yards. Now, Mickle played that really well. He saw how it was dropping. He let it drop and then came up hard to the ball. No yards. He got a no yards. They'll decline this penalty. They got about 20 yards on the return, so they're not going to take that. They'll take the return. But a very good job by Connor Mickle. Ball on the 34 yard line now. Approaching the three minute mark. Here in the fourth quarter. Huskies lead by a score of 30 to nothing. Rolling out, shovel pass ahead, incomplete. And that was intended for uh, number 28, Tristan Kohler, the uh, rookie from H.J. Cody High School in Sylvan Lake. And we want to say hi to everyone watching down there in Sylvan Lake. Now the Huskies also have a young offensive line in there. And uh, you look, Joel Cardinal is in out of Skona, uh, left tackle, number 60. You got, I believe, Hunter Parrish is in. Is at, yeah, Hunter yeah. Parrish, uh, 59. Adam Cooper, is he the center? Yes, he is. And uh, we'll get to the others a little later. On the screen, pass complete at the 30 to the 25 yard line, taken nicely by number 28, uh, Tristan Kohler, once again. You also have in there in the, on the line, Nathan Laird, 64, and Scott Wiedemann, 62. So it's all uh, backups in there. Now, if you look at that running back on that screen, mm -hmm. he had holes inside, but he's so inexperienced. He's just a first year player. He's not seeing the field much. That's why he ran into the, the people he ran into. And uh, that, that's the nature of the game. Still a good Bike. number of veterans out there on defense, though, for the Edmonton Wildcats. Coach Asarley is, uh, is still out there, among others. Here's the uh, field goal attempt. Got lots of uh, line, and it is through the uprights for a 33 to nothing lead with 2.30 to go now. Cole has hit the, bell, the ball well all day. Uh, he, the one he missed, he hit well. He just pulled it a little bit to the left. Three and, for four. Uh, yeah, three for four. He's had a good day. Now I see Bryce Lee is back in at nose guard, so uh, I don't know if something happened to 55, uh, Sam Lauer. Cody Olson remains at quarterback. Harry Ainley Grad in his first year with the Wildcats, hands it off, uh, kind of a little sweep play really, and uh, it goes to number 80 uh, for the Wildcats, Brandon Rebnord. Brandon Rebnord is the ball carrier. Jason Brown wraps him up. For a loss of a yard, that'll bring up second and 11 now. That's now, I don't know if that was Veer in there or a linebacker that made that tackle, but it was very well played by the Husky defense. It stops him for a loss of about a yard and a half or so. Husky's uh, defense, a lot of uh, young rookies out there, and they're doing a great job. There's a... Uh, Time count violation in all likelihood going against to Olsen. If it is, it's a loss of down, and it is. This will be a loss of down. Or is it within two minutes? Is there two minutes? Time count violation. Wildcats, number 16. Result of the play is a third down. Third yeah, down. Yeah, third down. Third down, so it is a That's loss right. of down. That's right, it's loss of down. down. Inside three minutes, I believe it's a loss of down. So the Wildcats will try and move it. Uh, they have. Uh, They're going to bring the punting unit out. Timeout. Oh. Wildcats. Wildcats call a timeout. Uh, Olsen was out there, and they looked like they were going to run a play, but at the last minute, Coach uh, Darcy Park sends out the punting team. I think this is in in their best interest. If they had run a play on that, mm -hmm. they could have got themselves in a little more trouble by uh, if the Huskies stop them. They're they're right in field goal range right now. And even with their young people in there, uh, they're moving the ball. So, just want to mention uh, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, I, I guess in some ways uh, a bit of an upset. Uh, the Winnipeg Rifles coming up with a uh, 42 to 25 victory over the Calgary Colts. And uh, John, you said uh, you weren't surprised by that. I'm not surprised because of the way that I've seen the Colts play this year. I looked at their first game against the Wildcats, and though I thought the Wildcats played them very well. But they were Colts were missing something, and then the Huskies played them the last two games, and I've watched both of them, and.
and the Huskies basically control them. When I see that, and then I look at the rifles the way they've been playing, it doesn't surprise me at all that Winnipeg would beat them. Barnsley gets a good kick away and a good job on that uh, punt cover by number 10, Max Burke, another rookie out of uh, the St. FX Falcons. And uh, he comes up with the tackle and eliminates any kind of a run back. So they'll mark the ball at the 50 yard line. Uh, heading into this game, the uh, Huskies, as uh, Kevin mentioned, at 3-0. and Saskatoon Hilltops have the weekend off. Uh, they get back into action next week, as uh, do the Regina Thunder. And uh, the Winnipeg Rifles at 3-1 and now after that victory. The Calgary Colts are 1-3. and And the Wildcats, of course, 0-3. They will be 0-4 after this one. There's uh, the... Handoff taken by number 12 for the uh, for the Edmonton Huskies. That's Ben Wilton, the third string quarterback, quarterback third, is in third, now. Ben Wilton, right. He just ran his own read there and tried to pop outside. So everybody getting some action here in this football game on both sides of the ball. Ben Wilton, third string quarterback. Battenfelder is down. So they'll bring Runge in unless they put a receiver in. Now Morgan Runge comes in to replace Battenfelder at the fullback. Got an equipment problem, so that's why it's hard to hurt Jake, Jacob Battenfelder. He's a pretty tough young man. Impressed with the play of both him and, and Morgan Runge uh, when they've been called upon to, to with that double tight end situation that they sometimes use. And uh, I mean, he's a big kid, this Runge, uh, 6'2", about 225, 230 pounds. He's very good size and very athletic. There's the direct snap and it goes to number 28, uh, Ryan, Ch uh, I'm sorry, um, Tristan Collar. That was almost a mix up in the backfield. There was a player coming across in front uh, of the quarterback and it almost hit him. His motion timing wasn't there. And, and the other thing, I don't know if you noticed it, but it was like Ben Wilton was acting like a catapult to push the running back. They had to get him going the right direction. <laughs> All right, so with that, the uh, Huskies will kick this one away. Lots of time for Sabrin to get a high spiral and kick down to about the five yard line. It's dropped there and out of bounds will be, I believe it was uh, Lawson, number 83. That was Sabrin's best punt of the day and, and he put it out on the four yard line, or yeah, about the four yard line. It's just. You know, he, he's been getting better all year, and we've watched him two years now just get better and better, becoming a very consistent kicker and, and punter. And a lot of credit goes to their what they do with their kickers. Uh, they've got a dedicated coach there in, in Neil McLean, and he does a good job with these young men. Here's the pass along the sidelines. It is complete at the 35-yard line. And heading down to about the 50-yard line with the football is number 85, and that is the other member of the uh, the Lawson family. Uh, that is Mackenzie Lawson. Okay, now there you had number eight uh, play in the corner, and uh, I don't know. We know he's Jordan Muslow. Jordan, they they played him out, but on that, the way he turned, this time this has happened in the game. They turn into the play and the ball goes over him in their saber. You can teach defenders to turn the other way. Olsen taking off with it to the 50 and knocked out of bounds at about the 47 yard line. And that uh, that was all Cody Olsen then. It was all Cody Olsen again. He, sh he showed you his footwork and he's like his older brother Jordan. He's very good. It looks like we got a holding call back here. Wow. And which, you know, that's too bad because it was a very good play. But when I'm talking about these, these defensive backs on the sideline, if you turn into the field of play mm -hmm. and with your back, now you have to be close enough, you gotta be touching him so you can feel where that man is so he can't fade on you and make the catch. Now these balls have gone over the top and they're, they've lost the sight of the ball. So they're not able to make the play on it. And that it's just different techniques that coaches teach. And if they're teaching that type, He's going to have to uh, learn how to squeeze the man into the sideline. 
Well, give Cody Olson credit. He's not afraid to take off with it, and he did again, called his own number, and picked up about 11 yards on the play and enough for the first down. No, he's now got oh, second sorry, uh, and eight. Second, second and eight. They had about uh, they had, uh, right. first and 20 to go. He, had, he did a very good job on that play. Yep. Now, Cody, again, he's not seeing everything. Mm -hmm. Everything's happened pretty fast out there. So when he saw a gap, he said, I'm going to protect. I'm going. <laughs> and he's very comfortable with his running ability. Olsen now looking downfield. Is forced out of the pocket. Fires it. It is... Caught by Mackenzie Lawson, and that will be the end of the football game. And the Edmonton Huskies with a 33 to nothing victory over the Edmonton Wildcats. A well played football game, particularly in the first half. But as as penalties caught up to the Wildcats, the momentum changed. Uh, I'd say late sometime in the third quarter, and after that, it was it was all Huskies really. It was, and and it became a barrage absolutely became a barrage of penalties and when that happened the wildcats didn't stand a chance well the uh, huskies continue their unbeaten record four and oh at this point in the season and uh, uh, that's about the halfway mark of this football season and that's uh, that's got to be pretty good news for coach ian mclean well it is to a point but he is not going to be happy with this game uh, i will guarantee really? you the uh, there's especially with the offense they're inconsistent and they're not finishing and you're playing against a defense that is fairly young you know but the, I give all the credit in the world the Wildcat defense they played very well but I'll guarantee you also the Huskies saying look we got to be better now did players take things for granted I don't know but it'll get straightened out that's too good a coaching staff not to have it straightened out all right, uh, the traditional handshake after the football game, which I think is just a great thing with these, two, especially with these two teams. Uh, the uh, Wildcats uh, will have a bye, as will the Huskies. And these two teams will meet again uh, sometime. I guess it's September the 16th, and uh, I, I expect a, a repeat of this football game, but maybe a different score. The the Wildcats are going to come out of this game having learned quite a bit. All they have to do is just uh, be a little bit more disciplined. I think that and uh, the other aspect to it, I think that they've learned about some of their young players are playing better every week. Mm -hmm. And so eventually you're going to get that tipping point. They're going to get to a point where they are going to start putting points on the board and they're going to start getting wins. And when they do, then it snowballs. But it, it's not going to happen fast. It's going to probably be toward the end of the season when that occurs. Well, you know, they haven't won a football game. I think we mentioned this last week. Uh, since the opening game of the season in 2015 uh, and and sooner or later they're going to ha that that streak is going to end and and when it does I you got to believe that you get that winning feeling and you know what it's like uh, you've gone a long streak without winning you get you get one of those victories and things start to snowball a little bit well it does and it, it happens with the players they get to the locker room earlier they're happy in the meetings a lot of things occur and Darcy is building that right now with this program. Mm -hmm. Years ago, the Huskies were in this position, exactly the same position. Rick Walters was head coach. Yeah. And then he moved on, and, and Ian, took it. They, they did the first part. We're building on it. And here they are now where they're one of the best teams in Prairie Junior Football Conference, if not the best. And the Wildcats are where the Huskies were. And in those days, the Wildcats were the number one team. Frankly, uh, a lot of people didn't expect Darcy Park to be back as head coach of this football team this year, but the board of directors uh, saw fit to, to continue their faith in him. Uh, they have brought in almost a completely new coaching staff, uh, which has resulted in a different attitude uh, for, uh, for the entire team. And I think that is going to be a, a great uh, asset for them as, uh, as the years move on. And, and like I say, if, if they can get that first victory uh, this season, it will, it will certainly make a difference. Uh, we're getting ready to go downfield, and uh, I think we've got uh, Kevin ready to go, and he is talking with uh, the man of the game, really, uh, Brant Berzik. I am downstairs with number 22, Brant Berzik. Uh, Brant, a um, little bit like Mayweather McGregor here this afternoon. You guys had to weather the storm early. It was a, it was a, a heck of a battle early on, but eventually you were able to take control. Yeah, we just uh, kept moving the ball, kept running our plays and just dominated them. 
were, were you, I, I guess, were you a little bit surprised at, at how well they came out right off the start? No, we knew that they're crosstown rivals and they're going to give it all they got. This is their Super Bowl and they're going to come back the next game and do the same thing. Now, in two weeks, what, what, are you, what are you working on over the next couple of weeks uh, through the bye week and, and getting ready for the 16th? Because uh, we're going to have another great battle here on the turf. Uh, don't change anything. Just got to work harder, less penalties, and just take it. <laughs> and I guess a lot of confidence. You got to be, uh, you, you got to be pretty happy at, at four and zero. Oh. Uh, it's it's got to feel pretty good right now. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, team's working hard and uh, moving the ball, which is nice. Our defense is helping us out a lot, so that's huge for us. All right. Well, congratulations on four and zero. Oh. Enjoy the time off. Heal up a little bit, and we'll see you back here on the 16th. Now let's bring in uh, the head coach, Ian McLean. We'll bring in your head coach. Congratulations, Brent, and en enjoy the week. Here we go with Ian McLean. Thanks again. Congratulations, coach. And uh, well, it, it wasn't it wasn't pretty all the time, but a win is a win. Yeah, I mean we're going into the buy at four and all, so we're happy with that. I think obviously to for everybody, for uh, <laughs> across the board, we're going to see a lot of stuff we can improve on. Defense had a good game, and uh, I thought we have to get off. Offensively, especially, we got to get there. <laughs> and overall, uh, as I was saying to to Brant, this is a little bit like Mayweather McGregor, where you had to weather the storm early, but eventually you were able to put them away. What were you able to do in that second half? Uh, whereas the Wildcats, you gave them some opportunities as you closed out the first half. Uh, I think our defense had a great game. Our, our pressure up front was great. Our, our defensive line looked good. Um, I was happy with how the defense played offense, made plays when they had to. We just want to work on some consistency now. We got to we got to take advantage of some opportunities. We had some short fields that we only got three points or zero points on. That we can't do that. Coach Belmont said that that you're you're happy at four and zero, oh, but there's lots to work on over the bye week. What do you plan to? What are your plans over the next uh, over the next uh, this free week, if you will? Uh, we got a work week. We give the guys a day off, and we'll be back at it on Tuesday. So we got to go. We got to get better. Um, that's the first half of the season now. Now we got to get ready for the second half. It's our goal is to play 12 games this year, so we're on the first third. Well, congratulations on that first third. It is a perfect 4-0. and enjoy, enjoy the bye week. Enjoy the big banquet coming up on the 12th, and we'll see you back here on the 16th. Congratulations on 4-0, and Coach. And let's send things back upstairs for some final thoughts with Dave and the coach, John Belmont. Guys? Thank you very much, Kevin. Great job as always down there at field level. A beautiful afternoon for football and uh, a great day for the Edmonton Huskies coming up with a, a huge victory to go 4-0 and oh, uh, at the break and uh, something that uh, they're going to need. It's been, it's been a good start for them, but it's also been a tough season for them. It has been. They've had a number of injuries mm -hmm. and also, if you look at it, the second half of the season is going to be a lot tougher. They haven't played the Hilltops yet. They, they haven't, haven't played, played the Thunder. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's going to be very tough in there. And the Rifles are playing very well. That's right, exactly. And uh, uh, take a look at some of the statistics from the from the uh, the game. And, uh, well, I guess it, it bears out what really happened, uh, 430 yards total. Uh, that's that's a pretty good uh, pretty good number on offense. It is, but if you looked at it over 300, that was in the first half. That's right. So the second half, it, the game changed a little bit, and uh, these are the things that coach will say when they get in the film, they'll get some things corrected, get them worked on, and they got two weeks to do it, and I'm sure they'll get it done. Their passing game was just outstanding in this football game, completing 30 of 42 between, well, all three quarterbacks. And they they mixed it up as you talked about at halftime. They use all the receivers, including the running backs. Everybody's involved in the passing game. The uh, the Wildcats, on the other hand, uh, 12 for 30, uh, not not a, not a great average, and they really didn't throw the ball all that much uh, when you when you get right down to it. I mean, 30 passes in a football game. Well, you know. Well, that's usually in a half. You yeah. know, that <laughs> it can be, and and I think the biggest part here is that the situation they were put into. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they didn't get passes because there were so many sacks by the Husky quarter or by the Husky defense, and so it, it makes it very difficult. For those keeping track, 159 yards in uh, total offense, net offense, for the uh, Edmonton Wildcats to uh, 430. For the Edmonton Huskies, uh, looking at uh, rushing almost non-existent for the uh, for the Wildcats. What do they need to do to get their? I mean, they have to get a running game going if they expect to be uh, on the winning side of a football game. Well, they do, and that usually it's the offensive line. Yeah. They've they've got to get those five men working together, and they have to believe in one another, do their own job, get off the ball, 
And then the running backs, they have to trust that offensive line mm -hmm. and then to make the cuts that are needed. Now, one thing we, we are forgetting, the Edmonton Huskies were without their arguably their best running back today. That's and right, if he had Harris. been there, there might have been a lot more points on the board because of his straight-out flat speed. I mean, he can catch the ball. He can run with the ball. He can do it That's all. That's right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, the, uh, the the Huskies and, and their ground game, uh, Tommy Yanchuk uh, with a, a couple of runs and and uh, 15 carries by Brant Brzezik, 63 yards, and the longest was 10. But he was just always in there. He's always digging, and he, as we said, he's learned to read the seams extremely well in this offense and he had a whole year last year working with Jimmy and it's helped him a lot and Rick has that offense working pretty well. Six receptions too for Berzik for a total of 86 yards so again well over 150 yards uh, total offense for Brent Berzik. Uh, he's, uh, he's the guy that keeps them rolling in, on the offense. He really did this game. All right, uh, let's uh, talk about the, uh, the, the passing and the uh, pass uh, receiving. First of all, uh, Jacob Mihalides uh, with four receptions for the uh, Wildcats. Uh, he was the leading receiver, 36 yards uh, on four receptions. Uh, Carter Lawson picked up the one big one for 37 yards, and, uh, and uh, brother Mackenzie Lawson with a couple for 52 yards. A yeah. uh, couple of interesting young men out there. They're, one of them is a second-year man, Mackenzie is second-year, and, uh, and Carter is, is a rookie. So uh, a couple of good-looking receivers out there, big, tall, rangy kids. Well, and if, again, if you get, you've got a young quarterback coming up in Cody Olson. Yeah. You've got a fifth-year player in Colton Hippie. Now, down the road, is Hippie going to be playing any quarterback? Are they going to go with the young kids mm -hmm. and let them build and, and work with these young receivers? Yep. Uh, that's a decision uh, Wildcat coaches are going to make, and I know they think the world of Colton Hippie, and, uh, but sometimes you have to make that decision for the program. Right, Saskatoon and uh, the Regina Thunder had the weekend off. They will be busy next weekend. Uh, the Huskies and the Wildcats will be off for the next couple of weeks. Uh, uh, Well-needed rest for both of these squads. So uh, let's wrap it up and uh, let's go downstairs. And once again, here is Kevin Donner. Thanks so much, Dave. That concludes week four of our ICU video procast coverage of the 2017 Prairie Football Conference season and round one of the Battle of Alberta. On behalf of executive producer Rob Zitlow, we'd like to thank our entire broadcast crew, the hardest working crew in cyberspace, technical advisor and camera Dave Foley, our director Connor O'Donovan, switcher Alex Testowich, and on camera Matt Mosowich and Terry Farina, who should be getting danger pay out there in the end zone. Next week, as Dave mentioned, both the Huskies and Wildcats are on their seasonal bye weeks, but make sure you join us again right here with ICU Video's ProCast coverage of PFC football on September 16th at 7 p.m. right here at Clark Park will be round Round two, as the Huskies are the visiting team, and they'll take on the host Wildcats. Of course, that procast begins at 7 o'clock Saturday, September 16th, right here on ICU Video. Thank you for joining this procast in ICU Video. I'm Kevin Donnan. The final score in round one of the Battle of Alberta, the Edmonton Huskies 33, the Edmonton Wildcats no score. Good afternoon from Clark Park in Edmonton.